You put them inside. All right, let's go. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and germs, freaks and geeks, little bo peeps, uh, Mr. Meeseeks. This is the Tony Clifton Hour. <laughs> this is the Tony Clifton Hour. This is episode one of Benny Radio. Well, let's yeah, stick cares? with it. What else are we supposed who to cares? Call it? Yeah. Doesn't really matter. Um, we are coming to you from Nashville, which is our new home. We are a uh, bunch of transplants from Los Angeles, originally oh, from say. what? Nothing. What Sorry. did you think I was going to say? We are um, coming to you live. I don't know. From it's just, Nashville. You, you put it together. I, I can't put it together. I didn't hear it's transplants. You. So go, go on, continue. Transplant. Before I so rudely interrupted you. What did I say? Trans Ams. Yeah. This is bunch a of train wreck. Trans Jankas. Right off the bat. <laughs> All right, yeah. Ben Connor, Radio. have you ever worked professionally in radio before? No, I, I think you know that I have not, Josh. Take this hookah. Before we start, Take let us... from a tip who has... Let us know like trans have, jokes. Let us follow the template... I like to have sex, so of, I wouldn't work in radio. ...of Timcast IRL, who we've never listened to, but I've heard they have a pretty good template. Let me, uh, let's get some, uh, let's get some uh, introductions here, huh? How about, uh, how about you, Josh? What's your, uh, what's your deal? Uh, my name's Ben Forg, and uh, I'm the host is, of this your name program. Is Josh Loney. My name is Josh. Yeah, you and can call I'm yourself a co-host. You made a big uh, stink about it. That's true. Look, yeah. I have been it was stinky. It was, it was in the uh, radio and podcasting profession since before Joe Rogan was making podcasts. That's a true fact, so I'm going to open with that. Well, he started making podcasts a while ago. 2009. No, no, no. I got into radio in 2007. He started doing his little, like, from his phone earlier than that in the green room at the uh, comedy store shop. All I know, WJWLive.com. Go check out Looney and the Penguin Dude, 2007. Oh, and we have our first <laughs> casualty of the podcast. <laughs> right on the Good ball. stuff. Since this is audio only, he just nice. spilled a drink within... Hey, let's, give him, let's give him a golf clap, let's shall we? Get, yeah, let's give him a little. All right, it's it's mostly the hookah. Very song. nice. All right, that's Josh agree. Loney. Well, and yet we have no spilled drinks. Bassist so. for one of our bands on this uh, budding media everything. enterprise, The Absurd. How about you, Jasmine? Hi, I'm Jasmine. Um, this is a podcast. All right. That's uh, the lead singer, the charismatic very and meta. always engaging <laughs> lead singer of the band Sheedness. How about you, Connor? My name's Rod. I like to party. All right. And that is... Uh, who's worse? Of... Millennials or post-millennials? I'm, I'm not yeah. sure after that. Whose introduction was worse? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You gave people no information Connor about Cox. yourself. So, no, I'm, I'm the... I'm the you know, lead um, singer of Carmen Vulture. Sometimes I play guitar with with old Jazzy. Hi. Cause, which is which is a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. And my name's Ben Fork. I'm in all three of the stinking bands there. <laughs> no, you didn't say the third one. What's the other one? Did you say The Absurd? Yeah, I did. I said Josh Loney is in oh. the band The Absurd. I am. And then he's so rudely interrupted by spilling a drink. Oh, that's right. And that's all it was. Can you believe that? If anyway. you hear that, that's the hookah. And it spilled my drink. Yeah, you spilled the drink via the hookah. Yeah, I was going to say, like I said, I we have no spilled drinks. Is how and yet went. we've been hitting the hookah, haven't we? Yeah, heard? yeah, no, no. He was I the only one to spill a drink so far. as many drinks as you. We have a lot of drinks on this table. One of these days, we're going to get a video component, and you're going to see just how many drinks we have on this table. Because, ladies and gentlemen, no one parties like Bentney Records. No. I will tell you that much. Yes. It's a problem. It I, is, actually. You know, I, was, I, was, I wanted to comment on the fact that we're, we're just audio right now. I, I'm personally psyched about it because I can wear socks and sandals and no one knows. Yeah, you look is, like shit. I really do. And it's, you, I mean, you sound great, though. Uh, thank you. I'm, one one would not know that you look like a scraggly bum. Well, you know, it's it, only if you know me would you know that. <laughs> uh, you look handsome. Thanks, bud. You, you pull off the scraggly it's, bum look well. It's my, it's my uh, sweatshirt fit for, uh, you know, someone not Fit my for age. a king. Yeah, a king. That's what I was going to say, a king. Josh, you should do that into the microphone. Very good. All right. We got many smoking accessories, many drinking accessories. I don't know exactly what the show is going to be about. I want it to be a culture show. I want it to be focused on arts. Politics is going to bleed in there. I want it to be about you. Not just about music, the listener. though. Because eventually we're going to develop Bentney Media, not just Bentney Records. It already exists. It does? Do we have Technically, an, do we have I had them credit Bentney Media for my contribution to the High Desert Queen do we have an Instagram uh, live stream and video? Can we, we don't have a an second Instagram? golf clap. We don't even. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Uh, um, um, no, we don't have Instagram, but I didn't realize that was the <laughs> metric do. for reality. Oh, I should have brought my little. Uh, yeah, you have whatever. You attention? I have oh yes. Oh, you got to get that in megaphone. here next time. Do you? Uh, I don't think a no, microphone. No, that'll just is hurt. Like a, <laughs> that's going to be just overwhelming. It's got a siren though. I was going to ask us to go to go back if I could make a joke, but I don't remember. What do you want to go backwards? No. Okay, we got to keep moving forward. Rewind. Oh, it was about politicians. There's no bleeding, editing. This know, is yeah. eventually going to be live. Eventually, eventually it'll be, yeah, run yeah. smoothly. Uh, Sorry, not Josh. today. It's my fault. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, today's not going to be a smooth run. 
don't tell anybody. They'll notice. Well, I figured we would start by, you know, kind of talking about what uh, inspired us to come around to form this little collective known as Bentney Records, soon to branch out into the media empire that no one can compete with because we're going to swallow up all the major record labels and uh, various uh, media enterprises in the country. Um, like a Leviathan to... swallowing well, Jonah. Well, okay, Josh, how about you? Because you are so very eloquent and well-spoken, and also Indeed. very mild-mannered. Indeed. <laughs> He's a nice boy, you know? Give me, especially because, so we do have, we have three bands here. We have Sheedness, Karma Vulture, and The Absurd, anyway, representatives from them. They're three of the flagship bands for this record label and this project. Um, since The Absurd was kind of at the middle of what we were doing in Los Angeles, why don't you give me your rundown of why we left Los Angeles? Because we did all move here as a group. Um, sure. Which was pretty remarkable about a month ago to Nashville, fucking Tennessee. Mm -hmm. A group of nine people that will soon expand. Yes. yes how Bentney Records kind of came to be and all of that. Um, well, originally, Ben and I had been. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm Ben. <laughs> no, that's me. I already said it. Hmm. Um, ben and I had been in a band called The Absurd, if you haven't heard. We're pretty good. That rhymed. That rhymed. I know. <laughs> Peanut gallery coming in hot. <laughs> and. Basically, our time in L.A. actually was not unproductive, and uh, I accomplished my main goal moving to L.A. as a, uh, my main personal goal. Because you know how, like, everyone has the goal, like, oh, we're going to be rich. We're going to be famous. Oh, my God. Usually, though... Good thing one wasn't to become handsome. Yeah, well, that's a <laughs> lost cause. <laughs> um, but luckily, I'm, I, I, I'm always, I've always been the sort of person who, like, it's like, all right, I understand I might not be rich. Considering that, what do I need to accomplish to still make my time in L.A. worth it? I feel like we accomplished it in that we really did. Uh, we figured out where the pulse was, and then we kind of moved the pulse towards us. Mm -hmm. And what at do you, this how point... So? Um, well, mostly by recognizing that the... Uh, I have a feeling people are going to be happy when that fucking hook is done. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm not going to be because I like sorry. being buzzed. But the uh, I, I would say we did it by recognizing that the pulse quote unquote was essentially a vestigial organ of an industry that is dying right yeah. so considering this the music industry well just the entertainment uh the old entertainment establishment the old, i would say the old guard yeah because streaming's killing everything and um there really hasn't been any sort of feedback between consumer and creator other than likes and views, which you can buy for about 15 years now. Almost. Well, and also Netflix stopped it. They used to have a star system, and now they just have a thumbs up, a thumbs down. Uh, the star system actually was never... The reason they changed that was because the star system was actually never based on viewer ratings. It was based on their algorithm's prediction of how likely you were to like the movie. So if it said five stars, that Are meant... Are you sure about that? Yes. Jamie! It was a big... Uh, it was a big... Um, Our controversy left. at the time. We can't look it up anymore. It's because we're not very interesting. One of you right, two well. could do it. Someone fact checked me <laughs> or him on that. Anyway, anyway the point is, is that like, uh, there's no such thing as facts. But basically, I found a really cool rock scene when I moved to LA, and one of the only things that tied it together was there's like one dude who, along with some other dudes, you know, and ladies and others, whatever. Dude is you get what I'm saying? Dude is gender neutral, right? Yeah. This dude was a dude, though. Not according to all non-dudes. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, my, dude, my good friend... I, I identify as dude. Yeah. He's a dude. She's a dude. That's We're like, all yeah. dudes. Yeah. Everyone's seen Good Burger. We, yeah. We all have seen well, Good Burger. Can I have not. Fuck off. I, I, I also have a point to add to, to your question, Josh. Initial question. Yeah. Well, real quick. So, my good friend, Emery, who's probably uh, one of my best friends I'd made in L.A. before he died, rest in peace, uh, was such a nice guy... And was at everything. He was a really successful photographer, lighting technician. Uh, he kind of just like united everybody together. And the second he died, there was a lot of people who I thought were my friends who all of a sudden I found out were not my friends. When was and that? When he died? Uh, God, jeez, when was that? 2016 maybe? 2017? Yeah. I think 2017. I, I don't exactly remember. Because it was, it could have been 2018. I think I think it might have been a little later because 2016 would have been right when the absurd was kind of taking off. So anyway, Wait, there was a there yeah. was a point around which I was like, oh shit, all these fake people. friends stole your real friends' bodies. Right. Well, and you know, there's look, yes, there's. 
I don't blame people for looking out for number one ever, I guess. But the way I saw it was, why would I try, why would I fight to try and be a part of a system that doesn't want me a part of it, essentially, right? So we decided, let's take, uh, I also looked around and said, man, there's so many good bands and most of them aren't in the click. We should probably just like talk to them and be like, yo, want to just do our own thing where we're not clicky and not like, where it's more about quality than it is about like who you know, right? right? And so just by doing that, people kind of naturally gravitated to it because that's an easy thing to sell. Oh, dude, it's you go because it's good. Not because you need to be seen there, but you just go because it's good and you like it. Which ended up getting us ostracized by a lot of people in Los Angeles. Yeah, but it also got a lot of people because merit tr- hitting nothing. us up, trying to play shows and all that stuff. I right. still do that. Yes. Yeah. And, no, and I many mean, of the pe- well, well, of course. We but, had well, we had core principles and we stuck to them rather than cave in and try to play a game that because look, the, the, and an, enough least, of the old guard, by the way, knew that we were good people. That like it wasn't a, a total lost cause. It was just like I'm not going to play the game and hope someone helps me out. I'm going to help myself. Well, okay. also, it's like you know, uh, why would I? The whole point of me being an artist or being becoming a musician in the first place was freedom of expression and freedom to do what I want. So, if this you know scene isn't going to let me do that or at least let me have a chance at doing that yeah just be then hurt i don't, don't want to be part of it. and fl- i mean you want to do more than just survive you know be you want to flourish too yeah well right. exactly you want to have the chance to flourish exactly and but 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 you know with how bad it got in los angeles at least in my opinion it would have been good enough to just be well and so for, <laughs> yeah. the, for the listeners for the listeners without to the getting bad kind of skips a step from where we were at which well, is that things were actually going pretty well until the lockdown happened. Well, I'm like, yo, I mean... Connor will tell you, yeah, last show we had before lockdown was, was bananas. Was bananas. I mean, even the show we had before we left was bananas. Well, yeah. you know, my point to add to what to what you asked Josh yeah. uh, was that, like, yo, from an outsider's perspective, me and Will had... Well, outsider and at least an insider at this point, too. Me and Will did not find a cool rock scene when we got to L.A. We were like... Well, you got there five years before we did? Yeah. We uh, got there in t- late 2015. So basically 20... Did we get there? Well, no, we got there late 2014. 14. So we got there in basically the beginning of 2015. You yeah. got there when? 2009. Okay. And Jasmine's been there since... Well, like, I guess my point since is... 18. Since she was born. And we had, and we had <laughs> looked... Uh, we had looked... I mean, we looked at 97? Kind of Six. You make me feel old. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. We, I mean, no, no, not at all. Well, I mean, why, don't we, you, why don't you give your, you know... Well, well, continue on that point, but give your story of how you came to be involved with us degenerates well, up, up till lockdown what was your so, tale you know i always I, i've told this story i mean you guys have certainly heard this but you know uh i kind of fell into your guys scene because uh josh like wouldn't mind his own fucking business oh, yeah he doesn't do me, that me and me and will who uh who is not here was certainly you, you know you guys know will you'll be introduced if you don't uh we were just kind of standing out front of the troubadour minding our own fucking business talking about basketball college basketball because will went to uk he digs basketball uh, and fuck the Wildcats. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Fuck the Wildcats. Sports. Sports ball. <laughs> but I was, I was as you're saying, say, outside the troubadour. Yeah. So Josh, Josh was just like, uh, "No, actually, you're wrong. This, that, and whatever. And also, can I bomb a cigarette?" <laughs> and Will with his. Expensive... I think I told you that nice royal blood shirt. Oh Did no, I was wearing a royal, royal blood, blood hat. Maybe. Yeah, royal blood hat. Yeah, That's maybe what it that was it. Yeah. But you're also you just like jumped into our conversation real quick, and then we're like, "Hey, can I?" Can I also steal a cigarette? Hell yeah. And, <laughs> but it, and Will's like, yes, you can have some of my weird, expensive Canadian cigarettes. <laughs> Exports. Exports. Yes. Export A's. Export A's, yeah. Not export B's. Not B's. You don't want the B's. No, exactly right. So, you know, and so we started talking to Josh. He was like, well, these guys seem like, well, maybe strung out and like they're in a rock band. So I, maybe I want to talk to these guys. And Oh, we were and still are. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's all pretty true. Strung out yeah, since but, 1990, baby. You know, look, I, I also know the first show that we did with uh, West Side Revival. Me and Will showed up and we're like, does anyone have an idea what's going on? <laughs> West Side Arrival being the, the monthly night at 30. Yes, yeah, yeah. exactly right. Uh, As you know, you're saying, sorry? But no, no. We're just, does anyone? We're trying to find anybody that can tell us like, yo, yeah. where do we put our stuff? When are we playing? And then it's like, oh, yeah, you guys are going on at what? Like probably 9 or 930. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, you no, did. Was that was when, that side, when Aaron was running things. Side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just make it. Do, that was when it was all in a little townhouse. Segment. Still, yeah, that's a yeah, wild okay. time. So, you don't want to do that. Uh, you don't want to put your cheek on the microphone. We do need a visual element just so you can see how dumb all of us Stupid, all this look. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> I look great. I don't know about you guys. So, see, see Josh's angle. Mimic his angle. Yeah. Okay. Uh, should, is that better? No, you should just turn the mic so then you can be a normal guy like that. 
Yeah, whatever. Just keep talking. I don't care. <laughs> you're going to sound like powerful. A, okay. Well, so I'll, I'll try not to sound as powerful. <laughs> no, no. You're well, so, so, getting back to your playing yeah, townhouse. Yeah, 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 so we're playing townhouse. This is early and, on, yeah. And me and Will yeah. get there on time because we like to get places on time because it uh, makes us look like not quite the degenerates that we are, in fact. And uh, <clears throat> we can't find anyone that has any idea what's going on. We're like, all right, fucks. Finally, we find somebody, probably one of you guys. It's like, oh, yeah, this is the sound guy, Josh, who we now live with. Was that know? the first townhouse show? That we no, no, that was like the fifth. Wasn't. Oh, maybe it was like a couple in. They would have been the fifth. Okay. Yeah, right? But yeah. point being, you know, like we went, we went on two hours late. Yeah. And there was still a shitload of people there. Because <laughs> <laughs> we were like, fuck, man. There's oh, well, be you should no, always start a show late. There's going to be nobody... At their show by the time because it was it was like it was like one thirty when we played and there's still a room full of people. Yeah, no, you I, played with this... Ned in the Dirt, right? Yeah, and um, we played we played late though, man. We and you played band. with um with uh, Hey Rocco, God, and Hey Rocco, Galaxies. yeah, that's right, and Little Galaxies too. And yeah. uh, okay, well at this point too, I was still drinking. That might have been right? the sixth so one. I hated playing late sets because like every time I would play a late set, hammered. I'd be absolutely wrecked. See, that's why I love. That's why I like it. Sets. Yeah, that's why the absurd rocks though. Smashed hey, by the time I get up there. <laughs> point, point being though, pretty, pretty quick. Excuse me. Pretty quickly after uh, after we started hanging out with you guys, it was like, wait, did these guys really manage to build the thing that we have been trying to build and also have been looking for? Yeah. For at that point, yeah. nine, 10, 11 years. You know what I mean? So yeah. Again, coming from that perspective, it was like, oh, cool. No, these guys actually kind of did it, which is was wild to us well and we always had we always had the idea of we we knew early on that we were not going to make it anywhere by ourselves partially as a consequence of the music we play which we think is awesome but is not necessarily in vogue and even when it was the scene was what and partially and partially because partially because of that but partially because it's not you know la is such a big crazy place the music industry has just been hemorrhaging money for years and years and years And so what we figured was strength in numbers, hence the original West Side Revival, which was like a collective night, and then Fake News Records, which is a name that didn't last long because everybody thought it was offensive, and then Bent Knee. Um, I just thought you can Google it. You can definitely Google it. It's pretty tough. You can still Google it. Try it. It'll it'll just probably bring up like... It'll just come up like some fake news bullshit. (laughs) Yeah, your Netflix fact was correct. Nice. Oh, the rating system was weird. Fact-checked. But so so Boom. we we wanted to, you know, cuz we figure if we're affiliated with a bunch of different bands, let's say in in this instance if Karma Vulture gets big and the absurd is uh affiliated with Karma Vulture, then the absurd has a much greater it, it has magnified chances of getting noticed. Yeah. Anyway, let's flip it to a completely different perspective. Jasmine, how did you come to be affiliated with us degenerates because as a little background that I'll offer Josh and I are from the Detroit area. Can't claim the city, but we both love. But we're hard very much. Yeah, we're super hard. He's from <laughs> Bloomfield Hills and Novi. We're from the most milk toast fucking places. <laughs> if you guys could see their faces, you'd know. Yeah, you would. Well, we look like shit. Faces that have never people... been punched. <laughs> yeah, but Josh said hard. Well, that's not true. Yeah. I guess um, yeah, that's not true. Uh, I was gonna say a lot. Well, lots of people have wanted to kick my ass. It's just I'm big. No one's been able to kick my ass. Yeah, exactly. I think it's actually a bad thing that's for me. The, I think for me too. <laughs> But anyway, I, I actually, I, I, that reminds me, I, I, Josh Martinez owes me an ass kicking. I asked him to kick my ass just so I can know what it feels like to get your ass kicked. I don't think you want that. But in, in any case, Josh and I are from the Metro Detroit area. We came to Los Angeles pursuing the dream. Connor is from Philadelphia. Uh, he came to Los Angeles pursuing the dream. Jasmine, however, is from the great city of Los Angeles. Born and raised. Born and raised. Yeah, the hard scrabble. It's a weird neighborhood place to grow of up. Uh, what? Well, I was born. Okay, no, I was conceived. She's going to avoid saying Bel Air. Yeah, I know she always does. <laughs> I was conceived in Sherman Oaks. Oh well, that's what matters, obviously. I was born. Sherman Oaks I was conceived in a bus. About as nice as Bel Air. I may have been conceived in a Denny's. What is that? I was, <laughs> mean, I was <laughs> almost certainly conceived Denny's. in a bar somewhere. <laughs> in a Generally, stall. Generally, like yeah. West Side L.A. West yeah. L.A. native. Yeah, yeah. Which is where you guys were. West Side. Where you were exiled to. Well, well, but you're <laughs> not from, exiled. There. That but was that was Aaron's idea. To regardless of it. It whether idea. you're a rich bitch or not, um, you are That's from <laughs> you are from uh, Los Angeles, which is a totally different perspective that we have. So you would, even though you're younger, have been able to see how some of the music scene was going. You know a lot of people who, for instance, have parents who would be in the industry, right? Whether it's music or video uh, or video. Film, film, v- TV, v- VHS, film, a fine film. Ray Liotta's daughter went to her YouTube. school. YouTube, again, yes. 
Whoa. Pr- her privilege is up for debate. <laughs> But but just from being from that city, wherever you're born, you would have a much greater chance of knowing people who are in this industry. So you have a lot of contact with it, which must give you, I mean, I know, but... A different context. The yeah, idea yeah. is to open this up to people who don't know us. Yeah, what so was your give me the give me the, the journey. What did you see? I mean, for you know? me, I never thought that I had a chance because I was not Ray Liotta's daughter. And I grew up just being like, oh, they have those connections that I don't, even though they're mm. right next to me and I probably could have. And, and uh, I mean... It goes this way. Immigrant, you can take it. Immigrant parent. Uh, I'm just going to make background noise, so it's hard for you to talk. The influence of having Im- immigrant parents is also very strong, Different. which you guys wouldn't. Immigrants from wouldn't where? No, my parents are from Iran. Well, my grandparents are from Ireland. Well, that's great. <laughs> and Germany. <laughs> well, that, I don't think the Irish had a really easy time coming. No, here. no, no my family didn't have an easy time yeah. coming here. I don't know when when it got better. Uh, well, great grandparents and grandparents. So yeah, uh, it got better before it got well, better but for we, people. Before like we you. start talking about the potato farmers, back to whoa, yeah. <laughs> hey, so I, I was raised to think that I'm part I, kraut too. I'll I never you know. had. How dare you, sir? <laughs> Sorry, potato and sauerkraut. <laughs> yes, I never, I never thought that it was accessible for me, even though I was right there in the middle of it. And yeah. it wasn't until I came back from college that yeah. I had an existential crisis and decided if I don't try i will never know yeah if i don't so that that's really interesting too just as a quick interruption yeah. because all of us must have thought it i mean maybe this is different for josh because i know he's he, uh, maybe it's maybe it's different for everybody but at least for me i don't, I don't want to speak on their behalf and they can answer but at least for me i never like it's so interesting to hear that you never thought you had a chance because you're growing up around these people you see the nepotistic consequences right. of where they were growing up they're just born into the industry they right. automatically have an upper hand so it's almost like it gives you this perspective of like well why the hell should i try right you know on which, top of being told it, it, well go be a lawyer and that's that's a yeah well so you had pressures coming from multiple that's directions. just called being jewish and, well, well that too yeah <laughs> yeah. No, my parents didn't. My parents said, "Go get a good plumbing job, you stupid Catholic." <laughs> yeah, right. That's, that's, that's what my dad. That's what my dad told me after he was like, "Go to music school." <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, bro, yeah. I'm not gonna work with these hands. Like no. that's your fault. <laughs> no, no. If I hurt these hands, I can't play any more guitar. Exactly, man. All right. So I didn't mean to totally detract, but it is it is interesting because at least for me, my parents always discouraged me from following the music thing as well. But I never, I didn't grow up around a bunch of people who, you know, had super like famous parents or relatives or anything. And so for me, it was just like, well, I don't know if I'm going to succeed or not, but what exactly do I have to lose? And I hate where I'm from. And and now I have learned to appreciate where I'm from. But you know, when you're a teenager, it's you you should hate, you should hate where you're from and leave. And then that's the only way you'll ever truly appreciate it. Well, you you shouldn't hate it necessarily. I mean, you know, Mark Twain said it best, right? I mean, this applies to a place I feel as well, which is... You know, when I left home at 18, I thought my father an ignoramus. And when I turned home at 24, 22, I can't remember, I was uh, shocked to learn. Yeah, he's brilliant. I was shocked to learn how much the, the old man had learned in, in yeah. uh, sh- six short years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he accumulated all that wisdom exactly. in just those, in just six those years. short yeah. years. And it's like, whoa, man. So, so I'm sorry, Jasmine, but uh, what were you? What, so so continue on. Oh, your, I don't know. Well, well so no, no, you no, start because, your band. Because, because, because you must have. Talk because, about your path. Because, exactly. Because you had, a, you had a drummer before I came into the picture. That's right. You had a guitarist before who's how, you came Who's into how the we picture. know her, technically? Technically, kind, kind of. How do we know you? I know you through Josh. Technically, I saw the absurd before I ever met you guys at Echo Park Rising. At Rafa's? At Rafa's. Oh, that's so badass. Way back in the day, I just like dragged my friends to Echo Park Rising. It was one of the first times I've ever been to Echo Park because I grew up on the west side and the east side didn't really exist when I was growing up. Yeah. Highland Park was still gang territory. Yep. Um, Oh, we walked out out to a gang fight after that show. Really? Yep. Yeah. Oh, they broke that window. They, they threw someone through a window, dude. I watched, and this is not for the faint of heart, I watched a man curb stomp a woman. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, it was brutal. That's a bummer. Yeah, it was a real gang fight. Heck well, anyway, anyway yeah. I remember seeing you guys yeah. and like following you on Instagram, but then unfollowing later just because I was like, I, if, I, if I've if i come to hear of them again, I will. <laughs> well, what'd you think of <laughs> the show, I damn it? Did. Well, I thought it was a great show. Yeah, that show was awesome. Moshing. Yeah. Everyone was, was so sweaty that in was, there. Oh, God, yeah. I thought it was very awesome sweaty. In there. Everyone, you guys were cheered on to take your shirts off. Yep. I remember seeing Jess, too, because she had the Make America Absurd Again shirt on, and I was like, oh, she's definitely a girlfriend. So what year was this? <laughs> I think... Would have been the year we were eight, probably playing with Nick. 18 or 19. When did I meet you, Jess? Uh, 2017. Because it's been about five years. 
2017? It had to be 2018. Yeah, it'll it be it'll, it's 2017 because it'll be five years in March of 2022. I don't remember the exact date, but I know it'll, March it's March. <laughs> so, uh, wait, squashing EPR pumpkins in, was still it's a in new the summertime. Song. EPR is summertime. So yeah, that, so it, it was 2018 because was like I graduated in 2018. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then I moved back to LA. That was a good show for yeah, us. I feel like that was right before I was like in, into the fold there. Yeah. Well, Honestly, meant- we, had, we had like three or four... Right, th- like killer EPRs in a row. That was pretty. Yeah, fun. no, that we got really lucky with that place. Well, Rafa's is, uh, if it would have, well, it, it, it preceded us, um, but if it would have kept going after we got there, the way that it was going, which got prevented because the owner of the man Rafa, a dearly beloved, he got over. friend, but he's also nuts. Um, yeah, but they tried to shut him down so many times, man. Yeah, because he was definitely running a very illegal. Fucking yeah. nuts. Yeah, it was, was an illegal say, like, speakeasy. Let's be honest. <laughs> you know, if you're running illegal, right in the middle of, 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 of the main <laughs> district of Echo Park. <laughs> illegal, anyway, illegal speakeasy, and you're also an absolute nut job. Like you're not going to be able to argue your case. I we had been there. Well, he was so homies with times. the landlord. We had been there so, so many times. He still times has the property. Till five in the morning, drinking with Rafa, and. Um, he was unable to walk out at least 50% of the time at the end of the night. And yet... He's a great man. He walked out. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, yeah, he's drove alive. his ass home. Yeah. Oh. No, he's, he's a great no, guy. He I don't Bill, actually... I don't think William, he William, who that. was kind of yes. half blind, drive him home. He was wise. Uh, William was 9,000 years old. Yeah, but William would drive him home. No business driving a car. Man, that guy was nuts. I anyway, so what were we saying? I think you I saw Echo Park Rising. Well, Echo Park Rising also for the uninitiated... Is a, is a weird kind of street festival that Los Angeles does. They pride themselves on it. It's Being hipster. Oh. okay. It's a showcase yeah. for all the uh, town's best local bands. The artists. It's thrown by Spaceland, who's owned by Live Nation. Yeah. It's the whole the whole town. Every Almost every hipster city has a festival like this, kind of. Like, it would be like Art Speeds and Eats. Like, the whole block of this district. Yeah, for a couple Arts, blocks. Art Speeds and Eats is in uh, Pontiac, Michigan. And no, not it's, anymore. It's in Royal Oak now. Well, it used to be in Pontiac growing yeah. up. Yeah. And, Got too uh, ratchet. and it was just for, you know, families would go during the day and then at night. I remember actually I saw Kings of Leon for the first time, Arts Beats and Eats, when I was 16. That's cool. They came out and opened with Charmer, which is amazing. If you don't know that song, look it up. And it starts with just a wild ass scream. This is before Kings of Leon was even big. I mean, they were playing Arts Beats and Eats. The sun hadn't even set yet. And people were so hammered there. This chick just took a piss right in front of me. Almost <laughs> like shoes. It was amazing. Right. So it's like Echo Park Rising. Not there's not a lot of moms at Echo Park Rising. It's mostly hipster kids. Well, they do that's do true, but that's it's LA. Shows. Yeah, so the, the daytime yeah, stuff. But, but there's, there's families no families at. there. Art mm. Speeds and Eats like families. At lot one there were. Yeah, would you like to buy this little thing? I it says love your family on a. <laughs> yeah, sure. My point and is everyone everyone's on. seen everyone's <laughs> and, seen a district. Did she have did a it fair? Not tie the room together. And you know it, it it's basically the Echo Park Fair, but it's specifically well, at for the, local at the risk of becoming sexist. I mean, all three of us men have been interrupting the one woman on the podcast, so we should probably. It's okay. You asked me to tell a very long. I did. Story. Yeah. <laughs> so I interrupted you saw us, Josh. You saw, I'm sorry. You and saw I us at Rafa's. started way at the beginning. You saw us at Rafa's. Continue on. How did you enter the fold? <laughs> um, so I moved back to LA. I graduated college and I said, fuck you to law school. And I decided to start a band. And so at first it was just me and my one of my bestest friends, Grace, my, one of my oldest friends, and her boyfriend, Osiris. And then we needed a drummer. And so we hit up our middle school friend, Nicole. Mm-hmm. Is this when you were called the typos? That's we were called Green Party way back when. Was that like Green Day? No, just Green Green it's a it's a euphemism, you can take a guess. For weed? Well duh. Yeah, well that's like Green Day. Is it? Yeah, Green Day is named after taking a day to oh, smoke weed. That's I didn't Green know that. Day. Yeah. Skip school. Any anyways. Yeah. Uh we needed a drummer, we hit up Nicole. You know you know what a brown day is? The more you know When you poop? Yeah, it's just a day where you're you say all day. <laughs> all day. So I every think that's day called for Connor. a cleanse. Yeah. <laughs> it's known as a yeah, cleanse. IBS, Anyone with IBS. <laughs> Anyhow. Uh, we, I, I decided like to throw this house time. show um, at my mom's house. And we didn't have a bass player at the time. We had two guitars, drums, and keys. And then... Were you keys? No, Grace was on keys. Oh. And You're then I threw this house player. show, and I just invited everyone I knew. Mm. And one of our friends, Steven, brought Walker. And that's how Walker joined the band. On bass, because he was like, you guys need a bass player. I pl- I'll play it. <laughs> Walker's nuts. And he learned how to play bass for the band. And then it ended up just being me and Walker. Yeah. And so I was like, I need a fucking drummer at least. Yeah. So I was just going out to shows. I was just kind of like how I went to Echo Park Rising. I was just like, what shows are there? 
in LA near me. I live on the west side. Yeah. Um, well, no, Nicole was still in your band when I met you. Was she? Yeah, because she oh, was Oh, that's right, because we would go to the Gita's shows all the time, because she knows the Gita's. There we go. So I had seen you guys play with the Gita's a bunch. But then when Nicole left... And the Gita's are the shit. They're yeah, the Gita's band. rock. Yeah, but they're European, so that counts against them. <laughs> <laughs> Only they're one third. Eastern. <laughs> Eastern. <laughs> no, they're not Eastern. They're 33% Eastern European. European. No, no, Sasha spends his time in Ukraine, too. That's, well, it's, yeah, that's, that's the Eastern, Eastern European Europe. guy, buddy. Not according to Europe. I mean, Ukraine. They want to be part of Europe. I mean, Russia. I they mean, want yeah. to be, but are they? All I right. think so. I like the anyway, Ukrainian people. Anyway, so you came to the, the, you listen the to satellite. Russia, it's just Russia. <laughs> I met you at the satellite. What, Ukraine? <laughs> and then I met you again at Bordner's at, uh, what's, what was it called? Rocker's Ball. Rocker's Ball. It was the Gita's. Shout out to Lucas Flood. Yeah, hell, hell yeah. And Lucas Holter. And Lucas Holter, who I had rent, met, started talking to. And I was just like, I, I need a drummer. And he was like, well, you should talk to this guy because he knows everyone. And lo, lo and behold, that was Josh Loney. Yeah. And he does know everyone. And he found me a drummer, which is Ben. <laughs> well, he had a convenient resource there. Yeah. Well, Ben and I had been looking assistant. actually for a band. We'd been wanting to be a rhythm section in a female-fronted band for a while because we knew we'd crush. And we'd done it a little bit uh, for Vanessa Silverman, who uh, we had so much fun playing with. And I'm sure there's video of that somewhere. But like, uh, so that was the original idea. <laughs> Background noises on this podcast. Yeah. Uh, really tie the podcast together. Do, do, do they, they not? not? Do they the, not? The, original, the original idea was like, oh, maybe we could be, if her music doesn't suck, we can maybe be the rhythm section, right? Yeah. But then I saw them play and I was like, ah, their bass player is actually kind of awesome. She doesn't suck. So, Vanessa Silverman? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh. No, Shedonist. Oh. Then called oh. uh, My Band. We were called My Band. I couldn't think of a name. <laughs> My band um, was. Te- I stuck by keeping that name. Technically, I like that. it's meta. It's it's kitschy. Technically, I think I was. I had had bothered you about joining before Ben had agreed because he was like, "Are you going to do this?" I was like, "Yeah, man, I want to play guitar." Did yeah, get, you and, you and Kev O'Brien time? were yeah. like uh, weirdly competing to be like, "Yo, you need another guitar player," which she did. Hot chick who writes good songs. Ye- no, nah, I'll pass. My life's going really well. Right, well, yeah, that's why I was like, Ben, you should probably, <laughs> and also probably join this band. Sure. Connected, um, maybe, perhaps. Yes, perhaps. <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> what I should do, take a look. Those fucking Catholics don't know shit about that. Yeah. No, Catholics are like... Yeah, I showed, I showed Ben a video of, I think, the second time, or the first time Holy I booked you, but the second time I saw you. Kevin. The first show we ever played was at Madame Cyan. Right. But then I showed him video from the The second the show we ever played was the one you booked at the Virgil. Yeah, and... uh Ben was like, with, this with drummer? Nicole? Yeah. Ben's like, they do need a new drummer. We only played two shows with Also, Nicole. They're, this bass player rocks. Uh, I really liked Walker, and I thought your songs I think that's what sold it for him, and probably. no offense to Nicole, because I do not know her one way or the other, but yeah, I thought she was a lame drummer. I thought um, it worked for like the well, LA girl grunge scene, where like it doesn't matter drummer. if you're she's, a good musician. She's more of a photographer, and she's a great photographer. Yeah, she takes good pictures. Okay, but I, I was, without, we're not trying to like... I don't think she's going to have her feelings hurt because Ben's a better drummer. Well, good. Fuck no. her. No. And F- she quit, so... But I do think what she did... <laughs> what you said. As in L.A., what she was doing would have worked because in L.A., it doesn't really matter if you're good. Yeah, but in, that sucks. Because in L.A., nothing matters. But I don't want to just be... The Xanax yeah, rock scene. Popular because, yeah, yeah. ...for being a girl band, you know? Like, I don't want people to like me just because we, we're girls. Yeah, like, right, that's right. fucking lame. That's insulting is what it is. It is. It is well, I mean, if oh, a I mean, song's think, good, the song's good. As if girls can't write good songs and be good musicians and be good performers. Course, like, dude. They can look if a song is good, a song's I mean, good, and there's some shit musicians who played some great songs yep. to great success. Yeah, but she wasn't. So that's why it doesn't yeah, matter. I don't want to talk about Nicole too much. No, no, I'm saying that's why that doesn't matter in LA. I was using it as a segue. Okay, well, uh, well, why don't you introduce the next subject? Uh, that's nice. What were you saying? Women in music. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. A, co- <laughs> a consortium. Uh, no, I was. Uh, Feminist just, rock. <laughs> it's interesting now that we're here in Nashville. Why there should be more women in music. A discussion between friends. Uh, a male-dominated <laughs> discussion. Who fucking cares? <laughs> well, okay, so let's talk about... I'm um, tired of the girl-powered grunge thing. Well, that's exactly Look, what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah but, but like, that's because, like, are you good or are you not yeah, good? I don't care has, if you're a girl. If right. you're a girl, that's great. Right, it's I because don't want people has, to... I want to get shows because I'm a girl. I don't, I don't want to play girl shows. Yeah, take whatever advantage you can get. I don't care. Yeah, well, that's the marketing side, well, yeah. and that's not that has nothing to do with... I think part of what Connor was saying earlier is what sort of drew people to what we were doing in Los Angeles, and we're hoping to take that shit worldwide, baby, um, is that it wasn't about... Who you are. 
it wasn't about immutable characteristics or anything like that. It wasn't yeah, yeah. about who you're connected to. It was about when we show up to the show, A, what's the vibe of the show? Like, are these people cool? Did we cultivate the right kind of crowd? And B, dare to have a good time. are these bands good? And and one if thing... the bands are good, people will have a good time. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and we've, you know, Josh mainly, but especially in the beginning, Josh and I were deliberately trying to book bands, not only that... You know, we're friends with them. We were scene building, yeah. They got people who are good people. We we think they'll like us. Our people will like them. But also, like, we want to make sure their bands are good. And we've had a couple shows where we, you know, misjudged and the bands weren't that good. And we've had people push back and just be like, yo, that wasn't... Who the fuck were they? And that's not an insult to any band directly. And I mean that. Um, it's I just... Know who. <laughs> I who. I won't I say I actually it. can't think of it. I will <laughs> not say it here. But... Um, but either way, it, it's it's just one of those things where we want to make sure that what it's about. Because why did we get into music? Is to be the best. That's the, why would you? Be why an, would you move to L.A. Why would you be an music? artist if yeah. it wasn't to be the best artist? Well, well you want to compete with the best. That's why you're in L.A. That's you why want, you're in New you York. want to be heard, don't you? Mm-hmm. And like, yeah. it, I don't. For me, I don't give a shit. Like, dude, me and Will have played shows to the bartender, where the bartender was like, "Yo, well, I never have a hundred minimum." <laughs> <laughs> you know, the bartender, Only the bartender arenas. was like, "Yeah, yeah," was like, "Dude." I, there was nobody here, but I really enjoyed your set because, like, you guys just don't. And it's like, well, look, every time I go on stage, I don't care who's there, who's not there. Yeah. I'm going on stage with the attitude of, I'm going to show everybody yeah. why I have the biggest metaphorical genitalia or genitals <laughs> in the room, period. I'm just going to do that. That's what I'm going to do. Now, I may not succeed every night, but that's certainly what I shoot for. Yeah, and you know? thus. His band makes cock rock. Well, and, and those, are, I mean, those yeah. are also some of the most gratifying shows when you're cutting your teeth are just to the bartender and like two people there. And at the end of the show, they're just like, dude, I'm sorry there wasn't anybody here, but you guys, uh, can I like buy an album? Or... Yeah. And if you... it's the bartender, you don't That's have how to it started. buy an album. You've been giving me drinks. That's how it starts yet. for so everyone. I, except you for right. you, I guess. Especially because we've <laughs> but... worked in bars forever. Mm-hmm. Like, but you know what I mean? So a lot of people, what I, one thing I've noticed is a lot of people, and we've only been in Nashville for what, a month? Um, yep, right about, yeah, right much. about. And one thing I'm noticing from a lot of people from Nashville natives is they're like, why did you move away from Los Angeles? And this probably brings us more into the social. No, I think that they're, um, I think they're sick of people moving here from Los Angeles. No, 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 no. These are people who. No, they want to move to Los Angeles. Yes. These are people who have really never spent time in Los Angeles, but know the reputation of Los Angeles and are like, why the fuck would you move here from there? Because Los Angeles to Nashville natives, not all of them, but a lot of them, according to at least just the anecdotal research I've done, which is just conversations with people with people on the street. Yeah, yeah. you know, they go, they're they're surprised. Why the hell would you move here? And of course, to me, it's like, well, uh, what seems to be happening right now is there's a bit of a brain or a talent drain from Los Angeles and maybe New York, and it's going to Austin and Nashville. Uh, Comedians, Atlanta. And actors are going to either Austin or Atlanta. Musicians are going to Nashville. Nashville's always been Music City, right? But now it's whenever people are like, is it just country? I'm like, hell no, it's not just country. There's a lot of shit happening here, and we're gonna make more of that happening. Right? Like, but but so for for us, it's like whenever people ask, like, I don't wanna be too bold and be like, because Los Angeles is a sweltering fucking dumpster fire and they've ruined that city, which has a lot to offer. But that's basically why I'm gone. And that's just for personal reasons. Now, it's fortunate that 10 of us have moved out here at the same time. Yeah, well, okay, I have to... Here's where I... In the short answer, sure, that works, right? But well, I, I would say... time if I'm buying a... I understand, I, but like the What's key... The, long answer? the key to those who... <laughs> and I'm Mr. not even Noni, what is off. the long answer? Pray tell. Um, <laughs> the key to understanding why we left, I think, is that is is not that there, that L.A. was... Ruined. When we moved there, LA was already getting ruined. That, well, that's I'm, I'm saying personally then, that that's at that point the there was, I left. Right, I'm just happy you guys left too. At that point, there was something kind of to fight for. Not before and, the lockdown, or not after the lockdown. Yeah, not after. That's my yeah. point. But so before the lockdown, like there was a period where, oh, you know, labels and press and random people are kind of actually interested in in the absurd because, oh, it just so happened that all the market research from the end of 2016. Through the twenty, uh, through the end of twenty eighteen, showed oh hey like the biggest growing demographic is like that what you could call the Joe Rogan demographic, sure. right? Men and women like it. It's like women like old... Joe Rogan. Yes. Uh yeah. No, it's true. You're not a woman. 
rude. Who, I mean, <laughs> I didn't want to assume your gender. Are you? I don't know. I think so. <laughs> and like, I'm still a girl. I don't know. <laughs> some of this was hyped up by people, by personalities in not the a demographic girl, not yet a woman. because, you know, they're trying to get investors, right? Yeah. But that, en- that was enough of a common understanding in the world of entertainment that, like, there are people like, yeah, I really like that you guys are doing, like, like rebellious stuff like that's cool like we need to yeah the pc shit's no good you mean like right? rock and roll yeah like actual rock and roll <laughs> but then once once the yeah. 2018 midterms happened and i mean jerry Lee lewis married his and uh under, everyone started getting cousin that's who i want to be like i don't want to yeah do it <laughs> i don't have any underage cousins <laughs> but uh good once, <laughs> once um don't give up your dreams. once everyone started getting actually canceled like but not before Beforehand, it was like, oh my God, call out, it was call out culture, if you recall, was the term before cancel culture. Yeah. It kind of tr- truly can- transitioned once they started canceling everybody, right? And once they started canceling everybody in early 2019 or so, that's around the time, oh, the absurd was hitting our peak heat, which was great for us. Yeah. It was all going pretty fucking swimmingly and according to plan, actually. Until those pesky kids. Except, no, until they shut the world down. Pesky zoomers. And at that point, so many people left pesky LA within the first month. Dog. Right? Yeah. Uh, and then LA just never reopened. We couldn't get people to play shows. At that point, it's like, all right, do you retreat to safer ground to find, you know, a new battalion with which to war wage war against whoever right soldiers Fuck, this is a metaphor yeah it's a metaphor <laughs> well, dude right? look i think one but, of or it... do you just like berserk or fight till you die that sounds i'm not a martyr right like the, i didn't really feel like there was anything what would you be martyring I could accomplish yourself for there's nothing post covid for freedom right cares about but there freedom. was before before it was working out okay is well, my look, point i, I kind of disagree but yeah no I'm, and i'm sorry to interrupt earlier josh that was my bad uh, uh yeah, that was wonderful thank you that was pre- actually pretty impressive so i mean i think one of your guys redeeming qualities is like you know, a you give folks a chance where, like, for me, I'm cynical and I'm like, no. Uh, whereas you guys, are like, well, you know, maybe I try to give but, everybody a chance. But so you're saying there's a chance, so you know? You're saying there's a chance. Yeah, and, I, and I'm like, well, anyway. So point being, you know, I think when you guys are deeming qualities, you're like, no, like we'll figure this out. And of course, I have faith in you. Yeah. With LA though, I was just like, yo, this is not going to get better. You're just banging your head. Well, post COVID, yeah, let's well, let's be clear. Yeah. Po- nah, post COVID, pre COVID, it was already pre COVID. Nope, I disagree. Post, see, post COVID, there's I was just, no way we would know. You know, sure. I was just kind of like, hey, look, you know, things are it's not... like Prague Spring. When, like six months in, I was just like, look, a hell of a comparison. all the venues, literally every one except for what, Harvell's? Every single venue yeah. was, was closed. Yeah. Like, what, what? Okay. And like, hey, I well, don't... Well, and even Harvell's was, post lockdown, was open with like some indoor Stick- show yeah. with an outdoor, outdoor projector. projection. Which no was one rad. There for the show. I mean, but it's compared not to like what the we commu- had. We no, were innovators. Exactly. Right. It's not like the communal, <laughs> it's not like the communal spiritual experience that you get from playing music in front yeah, of people. You mean the reason you play live? Yes. The reason mm-hmm. that I exist. And you go to shows. The reason I exist. I mean, that, yeah. that to me was, was just, and you know, look, I'm just not one of these people to blame things on anyone myself. And you guys can attest to that. Yeah. Uh, you know, to a certain extent, my life just disappeared overnight, and that's that's partially my yes. fault. Well, if you know, for, it's, it's partially my fault, certainly. No, no, no. I mean, it, I had of no, course, I had it's partially no rainy day fault. Or nest egg, or I, well, I think the the fault that you would take credit for, I guess, there would be that you invested so much of your life in one thing. Yeah, and that's same with me because a lot of people, like I know my dad, uh, he, he makes signs. Sure. So his life literally didn't change, and so I talked to him, and I was like, "Look, you know, because the absurd in our." you know, heyday, I suppose, or beginnings was playing multiple times a week. We were playing two or three shows a week. And so it was, it was fucking crazy and really rough on your body, but really fun. And you come to, you know, you get addicted to playing live and that's totally what I was doing. And when it becomes natural and then you snap your fingers. And I remember I was at work because we both worked at this uh, restaurant bar. Shout out to little fatty fucking awesome place. Um, bar. And uh, I remember that night. I don't. I don't know if you were there. You might have been first cut or something. But I remember. Thanks, sir. Um, the night before the lockdown went into effect, uh, no one was there. And this is one of LA's like premier fucking bars. You know, Hot spot. it's always packed. There's always people. You Can't never. Get a table. You you always make money, and there was no one. And. Pam, the manager, just goes, look, you're going to want to leave early. We have it on good authority that a lockdown is going to be put into effect tomorrow. And you're going to want to go apply for unemployment. And I was just like, what? What are you talking about? And this happened suddenly. Um, But the reason I disagree with you, Josh, is because I was already thinking about bailing on L.A. uh, Because it's way too expensive. There's homeless people shitting. It was not for us, though. 
it, but it was, and I don't want to just live in that dump hole of an apartment, which I remember fondly and always will forever. And in order to keep things that cheap, I would have had to stay in that situation, which sure. was not a bad situation. Well, that's how you get stuck in L.A., by the way. Exactly. That's why. And I was I've a, met that person. I don't want to be that person. That's sure. why I don't agree that it was the lockdowns. It was just the lockdowns that... They, they accelerated it. Yeah. No, the lockdowns were the straw that broke the camel's back to me. They, In, in, in a sense, I think the, the pandemic and the lockdowns, and I, I think they should be referred to as the lockdowns because the pandemic didn't do shit. The lockdowns did. Mm-hmm. Um I mean, the pandemic, you know, maybe we could have worn masks or, you know, protected grandma, but the, the fucking lockdowns were the bullshit. And like, so to me, what I would, what I kind of thought was positive about it is I got to reevaluate my life. What do I actually care about, you know, and why am I here? And since we were with a bunch of like-minded why people. Why are any of us here, man? <laughs> whoa. Where am since, I? Since we were with a bunch of like-minded people who were all thinking about bailing on L.A. anyway, and the majority of those people were not from L.A., which makes it easier. Like for you, Jasmine, that's, it's, I can't imagine it's as easy or it's easier, you know, to bail on where you're from. To I, me, it was easy. Yeah, to I you, know. maybe not. I miss yeah. my family, but at the same time, I've lived there for a majority of my life. So for me, it was just an opportunity for me to see the world. Yeah, exactly. It's get out and see something else. chance for me to get out. Well, and you, you also think, like, L.A., you know, for, for touring musicians, for musicians who love to play live... It makes zero sense as a touring location. It's so strange that that was ever a hot spot because it's not easy to get anywhere. Here in Nashville, well, we can go anywhere. It used to be in, in the nineties. All you need to do is go up the coast. I don't. I don't even think like that's all true. All the Seattle bands knew the LA bands because that was the only tour you could. I really think they do. had just concentrated enough of the music industry in Los Angeles that you didn't even have to start touring to make an impact. Whereas now you have to tour in order to raise awareness. Because back then, a label would say. Well, we got, you know, how much? Oh, it's the fourth quarter. We still well, got $8 million in our budget. Let's just give 20 bands record deals and then send them out on tours. Well, and, and if you only lose, you know, a couple Jim Croce's and Leonard Skinner's per decade, what's the big loss? Nothing in my perspective, but... From <laughs> from from the company perspective, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, oh, just fly them out, and who no, cares no, no, if they no, die? No, what I'm, what I'm saying is, it, at, at that point, what the record label, what the record industry or the music industry could do was say they had a million dollars. They it, It's the same thing as the movie industry, right? You spend X amount of money. If you got a million dollars, you got 10 bands, you spend $100,000 on each band, right? You know that nine of those bands are going to flop. Mm-hmm. But if one of those bands hits, you gross $10 million. Mm-hmm. So it was worth the investment. But now, since the record label does, uh, record industry doesn't have any money, you are expected to do all the legwork. Right. Record labels don't even want to pick you up until you have 10,000 followers on mm-hmm. Instagram and 5,000 on TikTok. And, and uh, one sec, I need some. Well, you, man, even 10 years ago, William Morris, they, they're like, well, you know, we're not interested in you unless you're making a million dollars a year. And it's like, isn't yeah, that your if, fucking if, job? If right. I'm grossing a million dollars a year, Mm-mm. what the fuck? If you're an agent, fuck usually you only sign in once right. right. well, well, I'll tell you what I don't. So you, exactly, so, you yeah. can, so you can make me another million an except I'm different. making you five million? No, no, no. Yeah, exactly. William Morris is different, though. That's a good thing. That's an agency. It doesn't matter about William Morris. This has happened to a bunch of bands. What they what they say is okay. So you we need you to have an, a national presence, if not an international presence, which means you have to go to or Europe. Good luck doing that on a fucking shoestring budget. Although uh, shout out to fucking uh, Porcelain Hill, they do it all the time. Um, but uh, you you have to go, you know, do the real struggle and go develop the presence for yourself. And then I totally agree with you, Connor. Why would I sign with you if I'm already making a million dollars a year? So you can take 80% of it? Yeah. Fuck you. So they can give you a loan. Fuck you. And ask you to pay it back. It was always a loan. But the the point is, back in the day, they had enough money that they would say, this brand has potential. It's like Frank Zappa said, you know, what really killed the industry was these hipsters who came in and thought they had, they were tastemakers, you know? Mm -hmm. Back in the day, though, it was old cigar chomping men who was, ah, I don't know who the... It was a mamas and the papas. Yeah, the yeah like give them a record deal. Yeah, man. You know, let's see how it goes. There was enough money to throw around. And now, you know, it, it, and it was a loan back then, too. If they gave you $500,000 to, to do a three album contract plus tours or whatever, you were expected to pay that back. But you mm-hmm. would hope to gross enough money. And that's why there's a bunch of That's why you have a manager. Well, boy, you, exactly. you better hope that they promote you or you're still on the hook for that money. And, well, you're fucked outside yeah, of that. Yeah, and how about the number of bands who have recorded albums that have never been released because they're not Shelled. allowed still, to release them. And still, those artists don't have that music. Yeah, so well, look, fuck the hold record on, but industry. So, Let's make the record industry better. Right, but so if Talk I might it. then say one reason that some might be confused as to why we would move to Nashville 
considering these opinions. It's because they're from here. Allow me. Never been to Los Angeles. No, 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 no. No, not, what I mean is they might it's, think, well, Nashville is the uh, lion's den of this exact kind of system. No, that's not The true. old school music industry is alive and well here. Yep. Right. So that's what you were just talking about. No, I'm not talking about musicians or anything. I'm talking about normal people. No, no, no just, I'm talking about labels. No, I'm talking the people who say, who are confused as to why we would have moved from no, Los no. Angeles to Nashville. My point is one reason they that's may be. That's not why they're confused. Okay, another reason that may exist. They're, they're confused because they've never been to Los Angeles. I don't think... But the record industry is here, too. I don't... I've, I've not yeah, met the anyone who's confused. The record industry is uh, as dying here as it is in Los Angeles. And the record industry had nothing to do with why we came from Los Angeles to Nashville. No. The only reason I brought up that, and we got on a tangent there, was because I said there was no good reason for Los Angeles to become a mecca because touring from there is impossible. But <clears throat> part of the reason that was possible back in the day is there was so much money that they would throw money at a budding band let's say motley crew you could just play the sunset strip or, or the doors or deep purple or whoever you could play also the, hollywood was a tag you could, shelter you could play the the it, it was too yeah. you could play the sunset strip enough times gain enough people and then they would just give you money to go out on the road whereas now despite the fact that the record industry is dying here too and if you look up interviews from all like the main session guitarists in nashville they say the exact same thing. We used That's to what get, I'm saying. We used to get 20 gigs a week. Now we get five. It's dying here, too. It's dying everywhere. It's just geographically, this makes way more sense for us. Right. So that's that's what my I'm, point. But that's what I was saying with the people who ask, why did you move here from Los Angeles? Because they know Los Angeles from the TV. They know... There the, are a lot of people in Los Angeles who didn't get it either, man. Yeah, well, most Why people, would you leave? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's a shithole. It's a dump. I'd the also do... I never understood people just wanting to stay in one place for that It's also long. the most vapid city that I've ever been to. Yep. Yeah. I, I mean, like, well, how could it not be? The, the attitudes that it gives you are no unacceptable idea. to me. It's completely you know, where, where the, the, the culture there is, is to be flaky. I mean, yeah. how is that acceptable? It's it just understood. Yeah, but here's yeah. the thing, Connor. So if you, one of the reasons I moved to LA was because I knew this is the center of American culture. This is the center of a world culture. Sure. Right? Like it or not. Fuck that. So the act of center somewhere I, else. I get you, but so the idea that the attitudes there are unacceptable, right? Well, that means if they're in the center of culture, they're spreading, and they have the every year like when herpes. I leave L.A., it was freaking me out how much other places were becoming like L.A. in ways mm. they were not before, such as Detroit, right? So sure. uh, one incentive to leave, I think, on a personal level, is okay. I did. I did what I wanted to accomplish. I saw the underbelly. I saw. Oh, what is this culture really driven by? Because what drives LA drives America right now. Money. Not just money though. Vapidity, right? Fame. Fame. Power. Power. Looks. Sexual uh, perversion, right? Appearances. And I'm not even trying to sound like an old preacher here, but point is, is like you sound like an old <laughs> <laughs> cudgel. <laughs> but like, point is, like seriously, like. And by the way, I'm, f I'm fine with a little bit of all those things. It's just they've all been yeah, distorted and, <laughs> and, and, and it's it's turned cancerous in my opinion. I'm, I'm not fine with all those things. All the things you just described are cancerous. Yeah, yeah. That's fine part with of a little bit of sexual why perversion. Growing up there, I never thought I had a chance. Yeah. Well, well, part of what attracted fine with a little bit of part, fame and part money. Of, part of what attracted me to L.A. was all those things that he mentioned because I I, I think here's one thing too. I'm you know, 31 now. So it's a little different, but when you're in your twenties, it's like, I want to go be where the action is. Yeah. That's then where you the, realize action the action is exhausting. And not only that, they, it's eating itself. It's fake. I, it's, it's, it is fake, but also like, I imagine going to LA in like the sixties or seventies. And I don't, I would be really curious to, to like talk to someone. And I have talked to a few, but talk to some people who lived in LA from, from the sixties and seventies or whatever. You know, because I imagine that there was just more freedom there. It used to be. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's very true. Sure. Same with San much Francisco. Much more open-minded and much less the restrictive. Were now, there's so many fucking laws that restrict you from do, doing anything at all. And the attitude among and people. And it's expensive. It's, it used to be cheap. And it's a fucking monoculture. They they advertise it as the land of the open-minded and the land Where of the you can free. be yourself as we tell you to be it. And yeah. it, and you're not allowed because part of the, part of the chief reason. Chief thank reason. you. <laughs> we don't have the video component, but, you know. Connor did the salute for salute. Yeah, the chief salute. reason. Yeah, it's, just, um, it's respectful. A big it's, part it's of the It's generally reason, respectful to do. Well, generally well, generally well. Respectful. What we knew with the absurd, and this precedes Bent Knee, but I think everyone in Bent Knee is sort of on board with the 
iconoclast counterculture thing is the absurd, you know, one, one of the other things that probably sets us apart is that we're politically conscious and not I would because, say philosophically conscious. No, we're politically conscious. And it's not because we necessarily want to be as part of a business model, but I think we exist in a culture where you cannot not be. You would be making a mistake if you were trying to say, look, I'm just not trying to be political. Okay, well, then they'll come for you first. You know, or, or they'll come for you in, at a time when you, you, you will have never seen it coming. You will have built yourself up no defenses. And what we know is that we just never fucking said sorry. And that's because we disagree. I don't with apologize way. for things I'm not sorry for. No, that's well, if because you stand for nothing, you'll fall for anything, right? Old cliche, exactly. but but nonetheless, exactly. Yeah, and and so we started doing that. And this this is the weird thing. And you, earlier, Josh, you brought up 2016, 2017, something like that. I, I can't remember what it was, but it was it was before things really fucking hit the fan and went crazy. It was before the lockdowns. It was a time when. It was the eye of the storm. The sign shun shone through the clouds. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, 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 no. It was. It was. It was when we started saying certain things on social media that got us eventually labeled as like far right troublemakers by the crazy fucking stupid left and all these artists quote end quote. Not that many people, I think, think we're far right who know us. Okay, most people don't know us. I mean, they, right. they think you're wrong. Yes, and and their what their understanding it's is weird to me that someone would ever what, think I'm far right. What they're so it, it doesn't matter though. Yeah. Wrong. They do it's so odd, but but it doesn't matter. They categorize I know it's a little you, mind mind bending though. It's yeah. not any. It shouldn't be to you anymore because what they're doing is playing along tribal lines. What Othering. they do exactly, they draw categories in their us mind and they them. say they just since know you're not right, bad. since you're no, if you're not they, with me, you're against me. Exactly, they know since you're not one of us. You must be them. Right. And they'll just label you as the worst possible thing. And the number of times I've gotten called a Nazi is insane. Oh, I know. Yeah. I'm, um, I, I make I'm not saying it doesn't all happen. The time because yeah. it's insane. Because it's stupid and insane. But Los Angeles is the birthplace of that shit. Or if yes. not the birthplace, it is one yeah, of yeah, the, San Francisco one of the York, worst think, yeah. fucking perpetrators. And so before we ever even thought about getting out, because I remember being kind of confused. Because I've always been... Originally, we were confused. I've yes. always been more from the left than I was from the right. And like Winston Churchill said, if you're not uh, liberal when you're younger, you have no heart. If you're not conservative when you're older, you have no brain, right? So maybe there's something to that. But for me, a big part of it was like, well, I don't know what the hell you're saying. I've never been a racist in my life. I've never been a sexist in my life. I've never been a homophobe. I've never been any of these things that you keep characterizing me as. Well, all. to your knowledge, Ben. Yeah, to my knowledge. <laughs> exactly. I didn't... What what happens to be the case, apparently, is that I didn't know of my transgressions. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is which is absolutely insane. <laughs> well, and this, is, and this is something that just got worse and worse and worse over time. And we can talk about all the main, you know people that we listen to and read and watch uh, who, who talk about this kind of stuff. I think most people who would be attracted to this kind of podcast would already be familiar with them anyway. But, you know, to me, as it turns into like, I think what I'm getting around to is it's odd to a lot of people that people who are in the world, what the fuck was that noise? I have no idea. That was one of the worst a ghost. I've ever heard. Was that just like a spooky ghost in the machine kind of? It was the cat. <laughs> oh, where's, where is she? Anyway, <laughs> What I'm getting around to is I think a lot of people in the art world go, well, why do you have to be so political? Why do you have to go online and post your opinions, et cetera, et cetera? And it's like, again, as I was saying earlier, because you can't not. The world matters and things matter more than Also, I didn't know that that was a problem. Well, look, take, I mean, it's not. take right. me, for example. I, as a fucking rule, Yes, stayed, you have a perfect story kept, for this. Yeah, kept, kept my head out of that kind of stuff, right? I mean, I, just to me... Well, because you played make, the traditional L.A. Well, Hollywood rock and roll game with well, your old band. Of course right? I did. Yeah, man, and it just it didn't work, right? And, right, and, but so what did that game entail, for those who don't know? I mean, it's not even what it entailed, man. I, I just believe in treating everyone with kindness and respect. Who the fuck doesn't right? know? Like, but, but as far as the rock game, like, you know, there's... There's rules. You're supposed to do this. You're not supposed to do that. You blow like, the CEO of Capitol Records under the exactly, desk and exactly you get a right. record deal. That's why I moved there. I thought I could fuck my way to the top. Me too. I got offered. Ben did get offered. I I mean, that's pretty cool. Proposition, yeah. And, and, and you're I still did, here? Right? I, I did get the chance of going out with, with like a, a millionaire lady who was 10 years older than me. <laughs> why not, Ben? Fun. Old flabby man. Like LA is fun. I have to suck a dick. It'll be a taut, <laughs> fit... Channing Tatum. It's fun to dip your toes right in that pool. <laughs> I just don't want to drown. But in I mean, that, you know, you know, look. Back to my point. Basically, like I, I, I always, I always stayed out of politics, as a rule, because it just seemed to make everyone I cared about fucking miserable. Yes. Man. But you know, for instance, my dad is a vet. My little brother's still in the military as we speak, right? So, I, 
the, the further I got into it and the further we got into this uh, woke shit was it just, you know, who, who am I as, as a human being? I just let things that I know are incorrect go under my nose. You know, I'm a coward. I'm not a coward. I don't feel like I'm a coward. Yeah. Right. So why then am I just going to be like, nope, looks okay to me. Now, fuck that, man. Absolutely not. You know, and Ben, you made the point to me. It's like, hey, you know, you're able to articulate yourself. Do that. Do it. Do well, that. Well, also because eventually they would. Well, because you you were not would, articulating. They would no, come, because I kept quiet because they I would just come like, for I don't you. Want, I don't they want would, the trouble. They when did you, you first start? Way. When Absolutely did you right. first start? Well, yeah. I, I, you know, I was talking to Ben. Was like, all right, I finally deleted Facebook. I'm like, man, I've been off of that shit for eight months at this point. I've since undeleted it. Yeah. Well, you know, we all have mostly on. for marketplace. Yeah, well, Marketplace kind of rocks. Cheap stuff. Right? Facebook. That's how they get you, man. Facebook Face and uh, Kark Zuckerberg have it right there with, <laughs> with the Marketplace. Uh, no, I got it right. I'm sorry. I don't think, I don't know. It's funny. <laughs> Facebook. Facebook, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Facebook. Uh, no, I was saying to Ben, you know, like, man, I've been off that shit for years, and it's like, yo, I enjoy arguing, and I don't feel as though it's good for me yeah. because, well, I'm stressed out enough. And uh, he was like, well, you know, yes, while I agree with you, you know, I think shying away from this stuff is just is not what you want to be doing right now. You just don't want to do that. You you, you want to tell people your opinion because, well, it usually makes sense when you talk. Whereas also, most people, it also normalizes your opinion for people to, you know, that's, hear a, it. that's a problem is the reason that these people have taken over is because so many people are quiet. Yeah. Right. Because, well, because you know, e- look, even my father, who, who is a trope who is for a reason, unbelievably, uh, you know, both first, cons- first they came for the uh, commies. Yeah, absolutely. Well, he, he's both he's both outspoken and and also conservative, right? And uh, yeah. you know, even he told me like, "Hey, look, just in that industry, just keep your mouth shut, man. It's yeah. just, there's no percentage in telling people how you think, whether whether it's one way or another. Because like, why would you cut your audience in half, potential audience in for half? For sure, you know." And he's like, look, you, if let's say for instance, once upon that, a time, I agreed with that. Well, exactly right. I once agree. upon a time, I, that's kind of what I'm getting at. Yes. After a while, yeah. you know, even he was like, I don't really know if you want to be giving people your pain. I'm like, well, but, dad, what kind of, you know, I hate to use this term for people to misconstrue. What kind of man would I be? What kind yeah. of man would I be if I'm just like, yeah, that's wrong. God forbid, Connor. You, yes, I know. Look, right? Go sit in the shame corner. Uh, I'm already, Jess, I'm, you're on the podcast. I'm always in the shame corner. Here, here's here's <laughs> the other thing is, where I live. is that like bands like uh, fucking Green Day. Uh, fucking Green Party, Pearl Jam, yes. Radiohead. Oh, right? man, we gotta go. All these bands. The thing on the fridge, man. You just said Pearl, Pearl Jam. Jam mention zero. Oh, oh, zero. Oh, he already oh, mentioned it thank earlier. You, yes. He mentioned right. ten. The back album. to zero. Back to zero. It's. I mean, unfortunately, it's just the, a nest. When you are that big, you become. I think the Radiohead's one of the greatest bands ever. You don't but hear me talk about them every fucking. My day. point is, hmm. all three of those bands. Start. I just mentioned Radiohead right too, though. <laughs> Actually, you know what no. I should have said is, Walter, what the fuck's oh, up to do with Vietnam, man? Market sorry, 8, sorry, dude. Sorry, Josh. Bullshit, <laughs> Walter, Market 8. Market 8. The yeah, point no, was no, not no. to talk about Pearl Jam. Well, now we're talking about Pearl Jam. Yeah, good. And the Big Old Basket. Greatest band ever. No, I would say there's, there's a difference. But no, where, they, where, these bands were all political, and it didn't stop people who may have disagreed with their politics from saying, you know what, that rocks. The fucking Rolling Stones got political. Right, so I the don't Beatles believe, got political. I don't buy this. And they're also, morons. Uh, Picasso got political. You ever heard of Guernica? <laughs> like, I don't buy this bullshit. Don't hit the mic. I mean, uh, to be me. fair, mic war is bad is the easiest it's political stance stupid. ever. Yes, but my point is it was still engaging in... Uh, in a political dialogue. In yes. a political dialogue. It's always been that way. Well, I don't art buy, has I don't to reflect buy, the you know, time you know what it I think was created is that there were, I, I think that there were some forces that came about to encourage people to be pacified into not fucking talking about this shit. Just be Nickelback. Talk about uh, this photograph Never and how it made you laugh. Yeah. yeah, don't don't say anything important because you know fear. Well, they, my they fucking scare you into yeah, it. My yeah. family from comes from a country where you're not allowed to exactly be political. You're and not that's where we allowed would end up to say anything if everybody complied. Yeah. And that scares me. Yeah. I mean, just reading reading anything about Iran is terrifying the rights that women don't have the political uh, the rights seems kind of nice well that... no dude and and afghanistan is so fucked right now but <laughs> we are able Let's to go, speak Brandon. and if we don't speak we will lose that freedom yeah. because fuck your freedoms well if you don't exactly. exercise your rights you lose them for sure but yeah. I, I think it's also worth noting that like uh that doesn't mean that i'm gonna shame anyone else for not making a uh political statement but i will shame our society for for not 
encouraging such a thing because you should want your uh greatest artistic minds of your generation and i'm not saying that's us but i'm just saying that they exist in every generation and you should want those people to be making a relevant comment that can tell future generations what was it like to be alive then if you do not have an engaged and knowledgeable populace you don't have a society that can operate on the principles of freedom you don't have a democracy exactly uh, and and what my my point but there's is, a much larger what percentage it, of people always, I think who, who what this bullshit, will agree with this than this, than are given credit even for. even disco but they don't act on it had some political undertones no, they do they get censored love train was you know the the whole point of the peace and love culture was as a reaction to what they saw as the kind of fifties era war machine the post World War II greatest generation kind of thing are you rolling a spliff I was gonna oh hell yeah dude um but. My my point is even even those things are engaged and at a certain point like I and maybe this is incorrect and one of you guys can weigh in but I always see like the lack of political commentary as relating to like eighties music and shit it's just a fucking Edgar Allan Poe fucking look how sad I am the Cure the Smiths and you know well then also you get the, the just gross vapidity that comes with the eighties too yeah, where it's just well, like hold up. REM was yeah, making party, political party, party, commentary party 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 it's yeah. like man come on you had a Neil few, Young was doing it you Neil Young is not a product of the eighties. Sure, but he was around in the 80s doing cool so shit. So was Bob Dylan. And Billy Joel for that matter. Those are not 80s artists. Okay, fine. R.E.M. 80s artists would be... <coughs> R.E.M., I, I wouldn't even consider particularly politically uh, active. They, they have a couple political songs per Michael record. Stipe writes lyrics that make literally no sense on purpose. I don't really get it. I love R.E.M. I mean, they have some... Pl- I don't love I would R.E.M. say Welcome I to like, the Occupation. I like R.E.M. Orange Crush. All these songs are pretty obviously political. Uh, yeah, I, they have political undertones to me or overtones. I don't know what the difference between an under and an overtone. But anyway, you, <laughs> one's, one's under and one's I mean, over. Thank you guys. Uh, but I would say, like in in the eighties, you had uh, Knopfler and Dire Straits, and then you had who? I mean, he made oh, cause, well, I, REM. It, if okay, we can accept them. I'm That's trying to two think. bands, but the biggest band of the eighties had nothing to do. Yeah, I'm trying to think of who were the biggest because yeah. the reaction the then the it was it was almost. <laughs> No, no, who's who? on second? No, no, who's on first? The who? <laughs> no, but it's it's almost like it was bound to become gratuitous, right? Public Enemy. Oh, well, the birth of rap was in the late 80s. Mid to late 80s, yeah. Late 80s, Cause, yeah. Because uh, the Aerosmith crossover with Run DMC was 86. Okay. Yeah. Um, but what I'm saying I is, guess. I think it was, I think that's a little early, but maybe not. Someone, Jamie. What is it? Womp, 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 Search the womp, Run DMC Aerosmith. Run DMC Aerosmith Walk This Way. Um, in any case, uh, what I'm saying is it's almost like rock and roll was always so gratuitous and so over the top that it was bound to become but in vapid. nature, not in, art, not in the art form well, itself. But, but 86. 86, there you go. Yeah. Well, um, okay. that was my job. We didn't. But but what I'm saying is uh, you you... You have this culture of it, it's so like rock and roll is so based in based being like B. against something, being anti conformity, sure. That mm-hmm. it's bound to become a oh, yeah. mock fucking of black itself, flag, a mock of itself at some point. And what I'm saying Dead is, Kennedy's punk is rooted in the 70s and the 60s. Oh, no, those are 80s bands, I'm aware. Um, but so by the late 80s, you end up having bands like the fucking glam metal thing. And then the reason that Ick. yes, and then the reason that we got a little bit of a backlash is because grunge came around and was like, "Fuck that!" So now you have a, a meta layer. You have a reaction to a reaction because rock and roll was already a reaction to conformity. Now right. grunge is a reaction to rock and roll. Well, it's all abstraction as rock and roll. Yeah. And then in the early two thousands, you get a couple good bands, and then not much else. Honestly, butt rock follows grunge. And then you have a little splash well, of the post punk stuff, the white stripes. Indie stuff, yeah. I don't, stuff. I don't consider indie to be that good though. Um, like the Strokes. That, that first wave was the pretty strokes, red. The Strokes are fine. BRMC, yeah. the Hives, uh, White Stripes, Vines. Nope, that's after Butt Rock. It's the same exact time. Yeah, it's two thousand one. It's, it's a little. Uh, it's a little after that. It's after. It's a little after that. BRMC is two thousand one. No, 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 because no, Nickelback starts coming around in like the late late nineties, and bands like that. Creed. Their first shit was 2001. 99, yeah. Yeah, 99. So that's what I'm saying. So the the White Stripes and shit like that, they were around at that time, but they didn't have their time in the sun for a, a couple more years. Because Creed played Woodstock 99, that's folks. What I'm, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Ew. That's what I'm saying. Also, Nickelback started in 1995. 
Yeah, I'm aware. Ick. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen to how they sound. Of course they did. Yeah. And so what I'm saying is you got a little a little breath and then and then it just devolved back into like sort of an eighties new wave thing with EDM and techno and shit like that in the two thousands until present. There has not been a meaningful musical movement in f- at least fifteen years. Are you saying Doge Cat is not um, meaningful? Well Kesha's well, pretty good. <laughs> I would say the last example that what I about saw dubstep. No, 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 no. I, I would say that there well, was there a, are there are artists, but there has not been no. A there was there was a I mean, movement that hit ubiquity. Is that what you mean? No, movement that was culturally relevant. I mean, EDM so it hit ubiquity. It would have to hit ubiquity and actually scene. mean something. Yeah, that's uh, shit. you could argue that the last one I the last one I would remember seeing would be hip hop in like the early 2010s. There was a pretty yeah. there was a pretty awesome scene in New York with like Das Races fostered an entire scene. Those people are still fucking basically. All of a sudden, a lot of these people like Action Bronson are like mainstream. What are these know? folks have against ubiquity? Sure, I, I don't think they say much though, personally. Das Races taught me about like philosophers. Fucking, they taught me stuff that was both woke and anti woke. I mean, that's I mean? cool. Not music, I don't. I, I also don't exactly rap. Rap and hip hop, not quite music. I'm, oh, I'm come just on. saying You're Das Races. That one. Das care. Races is amazing. No, Das Racist is music. I, I, I think rap and hip-hop, though, are lesser forms of music, for sure. It's the, it's the most basic, besides trap or... Uh, it's like, uh, you it's know, like that... beat Rick poetry. You gotta, you you gotta know, view it alongside beat poetry. Okay, I love beat poetry. Actually, I don't you know, love beat you know like they don't Scott call Aaron, beat poetry. Huh? You know what they don't call beat poetry? Music. Music. No, that's why they call it poetry. Mm. Because all rap is, is okay, poetry. So what's wrong with, an, hold on, an acronym. Hold on. Rhythm and poetry. So what's, what's wrong with yep. breaking ground rhythm and, poetry. and merging where, spoken word and music? Is that true? Understand. Is that true? Where rap comes from is an acronym for rhythm and poetry? I believe so. Yes. Really? I have no I'm idea. almost positive. Somebody look, look that up. up. Um, I don't, I don't know because if that's true, in that case, well, that certainly justifies the argument that it's not music. It I'm does, not, but my don't point tell the fans is, what isn't it? It just. I love playing on hip hop stuff. If you're if you're arguing it's not music, but you're still saying it has. I love porn you're, you're, too. You're making a call semantic it argument because exactly. it still has artistic relevance because you're you're taking spoken word and music and fusing them in a new way. It absolutely does. It's not fair to call it not music. It is some, fair to call it a lower musical form. And you get some geniuses is, who do that. What would you call it a lower definition art? Definition of rap: an informal talk, chat. No, or uh, look up rap. A uh, type of etymology. music that usually has a fast rhythm. Yes, we know. And in which words are spoken? Search rhythm and poetry. Rap rhythm, rhythm and poetry. See if there's any. Yeah, or, or just rap etymology. Term etymology. I hope I just made that up. That'd be awesome. Rap isn't an insect. If ben. you did, that would be very good. Yeah. What rap isn't what? An insect. A- that's I know that was an that was there an There is an a musical artist joke. called Rap is Rhythm and Poetry. Well, so I'm thinking Connor might not be. Oh, I hope I made it up. That'd be dope. Super Hold far off. But but in any case, I don't. I'm, I'm just saying there was a scene. Regardless of what you think of rap, yeah, hipsters. There was totally a scene that that hit a relevance. It's it. It was West Coast and East Coast. It's where Kendrick Lamar came from. What Danny did he Brown. say? He saw Bob. What did he say? Kendrick okay. Lamar. A lot of people think he said a lot. He said you bish. I'm not a big Kendrick and Lamar fan. And he had 12 fan. other people. I think he's say really it. good. But yes, I mean they, I don't really give a shit. I what mean he has to be to fair to rock bands in the past, they also had but, lots of people help them write. But them. like, dude, it's pretty hard to make me give a shit what you have to say as a lyricist. Like beyond just like, oh, that doesn't suck. Uh, there are There's precious, so, precious few rappers that can really fucking impress precious me. You want to know why? Because the too, though, music man. is boring, unless it's Kanye, in which case, right? In which case, it's, it's pretty awesome. interesting. Yeah, <laughs> because you want to know why? Because it took a trope, it took a form, and it fucked with it. Well, a lot of here's what I'll say: is a lot of rap groups are similar to a lot of like punk and uh, heavy rock groups. Rap where groups like are just fir- hold on, hold on. Rap groups are first, boy bands without singers. Were their first records? Do you know how ridiculous that is? Listen for a sec. Wu Tang's pretty dope. They're simil- hype men. They're, I like three six, dude. They're similar to uh, so a lot of like. heavy rock bands and punk bands in that a lot of times the first thing they put out is like so obviously their best thing, and then it just gets repetitive and boring. But because like for instance, when Flatbush Zombies came out, that was fucking dope. When Odd Future came out, everyone was like, "Holy shit!" It was actually dope and innovative and cool. Meh. And there was like about three or four years there where like that was just happening Super pretty meh. regularly. It was pretty dope. Yeah, I know. That's cool. But I mean, just like any musical movement, you know, it gets repetitive and boring. Right. But after you hear it often enough. Sure. But that doesn't mean that you can't be Kanye and, and keep yeah, but it interesting. For <laughs> repetitive and boring. And, and I mean, right, I would argue even, <laughs> even, even people will argue that Kendrick that? has kept There's it interesting. Debates. Yes, I did. People, dis- debates. people disagree. There's debate. So the one I found was from debate. a YouTube video. It was a quote from a YouTube video that Google put together for me because they're so nice. Ah. It said, some people think that rap stands for rhythm and poetry, 
but it doesn't. Huh. Oh, well, I trust them. And I, that was a direct quote, so. <laughs> I think we found our answer really is what I'm getting so at. So it probably does stand for rhythm Exactly, and because, so anyway, because you, of YouTube is telling it to me. Somebody out there in you the were metaverse, saying, tell us what this stands for. You were saying something about there hasn't been a meaningful musical movement since the early 2000s rock scene, maybe. Yeah, well, yeah. I, 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 uh, rap, I could not consider not an important musical movement, but what I would say... Culturally, certainly. What important. would be funny about... Well, that's the, the those are the standards he was using, as, What would way. be funny about the rack acronym uh, as... Rack acronym. <laughs> rack acronym uh, as, as rhythm and poetry would be that it's redundant because poetry involves rhythm or rather meter, and I guess they couldn't call themselves maps, you know, because... Yeah, you don't want to do Minor that. attracted person. Damn. <laughs> yeah. He went there. Mappers. Although... <laughs> I'm a mapper. No. R. No, Kelly, you're not. no. Uh, well, you know. Pass me that wine bottle. God Everyone is telling me no. <laughs> but I'm still going to do it anyway. But I am. Do you want a cup? But I am a pedophile. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe we engage in golden age thinking when we say, oh, there hasn't been an important, you know, uh, rap movement, in, or I'm sorry, musical movement in however long. You know, maybe that's maybe that's the case. Maybe we're just being romantic and the hookah's basically done finally. Oh, so we can stop hearing that. Yeah, bummer. Well, maybe 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 we are being romantic and maybe we're romanticizing the past. Right? Why is that a bad thing? I don't know that that's a bad thing. I'm yeah. not saying it's a bad thing. I'm saying at a certain point in our culture, we hit a meta level where again everything was a reaction to a reaction. Post punk was a reaction to punk. Grunge was a reaction to glam rock. You leaving? No. Where are you going? He's leaving. I have to pee so bad. He's smoking a Go cigarette? Pee, yeah. Can you smoke cigarettes in here? It's not a cigarette. It's I want not a cigarette. cigarette. Oh. It's but, CBG. CB, yeah, let me have one of these. Where's that lighter at? What is this? CBG. Yeah, here's the fun thing about Tennessee. These are cigarette alternatives. Here's why I can understand. Okay, to be honest, the majority of people who have, asked, who have been very surprised um, at why I would move from Los Angeles to oh, Nashville back to this. are black. Uh, almost all of them. And I think that's because the South genuinely is... Not as nice to black people? Fucking different. <laughs> uh, and it's like, yo, look, I would... St- I'm no historian. I would still say you're better here than Los Angeles. Um, oh, but, well, dude, I mean, think about this. You're not part of a cult here. Yeah, I would understand why you wouldn't think all that. All the famous black conservatives come from Los the coast Angeles, for a reason. You know? You know what I mean? But yeah, exactly, because they're in a culture where they have to be sort of reacting. Well, and this was one thing about like the, even the movie Get reaction, Out that was man. pretty good was it was very much taking a shot at white liberals, right? Mm-hmm. Like these people in California are like, dude, I'm so uh, woke and like pro-black person and OMG. And in fact, I'm so pro-black that I'm going to tell black people what they should think and do. Yeah. It's like, oh, wow. Mike. You know, benevolent uh, benevolent control is not uh, you can come to the mic that fucking uh, reassuring. You know what I mean? Like this is it's the it's it's the hilarious difference between Christianity and Judaism is one has a benevolent God, one has a, a wrathful God. Yeah. Right. Old Testament God is wrathful and mean. Right. Well, I don't trust anyone who says they're a benevolent God. You're probably not. I. You're benevolent until I incur your wrath. Well, you can see the left totally like shattering right now with Black Lives Matter protesting vaccine mandates and them just not saying anything. Oh, I fucking love that. When I heard about that, I was so happy. So the snake yeah. is eating its Pass tail. That huh? there. Yeah, Black it's so strange that that would happen. The least vaccinated population, but vaccine mandates are not racist, but Which... voter ID laws are. <laughs> I shouldn't make. No, I'm not going to make the joke that I was going to make. Um, yeah, you're not allowed to make jokes anymore, Ben. Oh, okay. Well, then yeah, I'll say which the, which goes to speak to the average lower IQ of the black population because they're wearing masks instead of getting vaccinated, thinking that will protect them more than the fucking vaccine. Which is damn. Well, so another lost episode dumb. of Bentley podcast. No, it's just it's it's, and I understand because I didn't. I'm. I didn't realize it, Charles not, Murray was on the show. I will. Yeah, right. I will not <laughs> bell curve. Look it up. It, it's a reasonable book. But what I'm saying, this will get taken off YouTube, by the way, for saying that. That's what got Stefan. No, 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 no. It would only get taken off if anybody watched it. Oh, sick. Mm. Yeah, no one. Reassuring. No one one will. Um, And if they and if they do, they will not have made it this far into the episode. But what what I'm saying is, if you you know, it's I agree, and I'm not going to disclose my vaccination status because I don't think it's important. He got it. But I agree that there 
is plenty of reason to be skeptical of the vaccine, and I think you should absolutely question the vaccine, and I think you're stupid and silly if you don't. Um, no, we're all, we're all vaccinated. Don't kill us. I'm, I'm not going to say whether or not I'm vaccinated. We're all definitely vaccinated. Don't what come I'm saying, to our house and kill us. What I'm saying is... Please. You... Honestly, you shouldn't disclose it. It's Tim Pool has a good point. It was a joke. When people what is really, HIPAA for? Yeah. Um, what? Well, well exactly. Animal not only mile. that, if somebody asks you, "Are you vaccinated?" You go, "When's the last time you got laid?" <laughs> None of your business. Um, you know, uh, and you have no right to. Do know. you have herpes? Are you circumcised? Yeah, exactly. You have no fucking right to know. And so, how big I, is your clit? I'm just I, asking for your medical I information. I agree because the, the black community is the least vaccinated community in America. Right you say you're now. gassy. The black the black community is the least vaccinated community in America right now. Good and for that's them because it's because they're skeptical. Yeah, because they have a history of uh, the government fucking them over, being fucked over by the system that they live in. And while that it's weird, you might be mayor, skeptical after the last couple of years. Well. Not only that, but here's where I'm saying the stupidity comes in. So you think a fucking mask is going to do something? Come on. At least stick where's, to your... Where's well, this he, mask he thing says so. From? Every time I go out to a store, oh, so this is a, it's almost this is exclusively stat, black people wearing masks and no one else. Have you been to the Trader Joe's in Brentwood? Yeah. Everyone's yeah, wearing a mask yeah, in there. It, it, it's well, really it's Trader depends, Joe's. Man, yeah. well, no, no, yeah. no. Every, every store that's like black heavy, which is close to where I live... Uh, it's it's almost always black people wearing masks and not black people not wearing masks. And I don't I don't know why that is, but I assume it's because the vaccination rates are so low. Well, your girlfriend's not wearing a mask. Comparatively, well, we're doing a podcast. None of us are wearing masks. Well, I mean, when you're in the store, Wait, you guys aren't wearing masks. No, so I, she's I helping believe. rebalance the scales. Well, her white half is not wearing a mask. Dude, I see so many white honkies and masks. I'm just a token, according to some people. So you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, those people just has been called a token by supposedly anti-racist people. Well, yeah, yeah. Which is one of the greatest ironies of my life. I know. Well, you, you know how you fight fire with fire. You should fight uh, racism with racism. Yeah. <laughs> There's well, no such know. thing as it's called, racism. dude. It's called escalation. What's the problem? It's, it always it's, ends it's well. A new, it's a new way for fucking morons to think that they're better than you are. Yeah, I'm just saying with the, with the amount of studies that come out showing, like, like it's it, not only that a mask isn't going to do anything. And look, I'm not saying the vaccine is doing a whole lot either. Although it is keeping people out of the hospital and keeping people from dying at pretty good numbers. Um, and I've heard face coverings can prevent you from getting raped because if people see your face, then they are, they may rape you. And you think that's not a worse joke than the one I made earlier? No, but I do think a lot of you black people are, are Muslim. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's hit all the bases. Well, we got to get it out of the way. No, but for uh, real, though, space like... Space Jews. I, I'll be honest. <laughs> if, I, if I have... I like to th- like think of the world in two ways, and I like to... Well, that's a very black and white way to think. Well, you know what I mean. But I, I like, I like <laughs> no, to... No, I don't. I like to uh, have the sane part of my brain, which is like, yeah, the moon was created with an, a- with an asteroid. What hit about the, Earth. the insane and then part I like of the membrane? And then I like to think about, what about the uh, crazy <laughs> idea that the moon was towed here as an earth seeding life-seeding vehicle to the Earth by aliens? Right? Space toad? I like to think about, like, okay, space, space what toad? is the God. rational Occam's razor explanation for things? And then let's just consider what Alex Jones might think. Well, don't, don't confuse, don't conf, don't confuse Occam's razor for being rational. Occam's razor is just the simplest. The simplest. You know, you know what I mean, though. Yeah. Point is, is that usually I operate off of the first, the more rational calculation. But I like to keep in mind, okay, well, what, which, what of these crazy ideas that are floating out there are possible? Because a lot are just impossible and crazy. Some are possible, right? And so you might as well at least. Think, okay, well, if it is in that context, like you run the simulation, what, could that be an explanation, right? And we do know, the movie Network talks about it. What the fuck is the great feminist simulation Ian shit? Ian Hersey really? Ali talks about it. Uh, the Saudi American, uh, The Saudi Arabian government pumps on an average of $1.2 billion into American media every year. You, you, Point you, is, you've interrupted well, other people to clarify you're trying to, for those who might not know. You might want to clarify a few of these. Uh, well, also, I have a point. My, too, hold on, hold on. This, it's all coming together right here. Pee while this happens. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, you can probably take a break. Hey, if anybody needs to pee, no points will ever be made. You can if just you can't leave this thing going. Had to pee for It'll be a nice background time, noise while you tinkle. Yeah. The point was, it, it seems to me to be a, a potential motivation for masking. To like be pushing, there's there's definitely an Islamic propaganda movement, right? Yeah. So, now let's get everyone, especially the women, used to wearing a mask, especially all the white male bitches. You think that the Islamists 
I don't think in I, Afghanistan I and Iran and Iraq and Saudi Arabia don't see a lot of the American uh, let's say metrosexuals as fucking extraordinary, boy weaklings. Of course they do. They're laughing at it and they're waiting. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, and I haven't seen any evidence. I'm of saying an Islamic agenda this is the more the reason for us masking. No, no, no. There is evidence that they give 1.2 billion dollars to media every year on average. Okay. Look, what are you? But hold to say? on. My point is, this is Jews the more, give more. This no, they don't actually. Oh, sorry, they make more. Sure. Okay. But the point is, is that um, the point was that this is the more conspiratorial so side the that I don't are use. Paying the Jews? No, I don't think that it's true. I consider it as a possibility. <laughs> okay. And I consider it as an unlikely possibility, but I think there's that uh, relation because the same group who pushes the mask mandates and all that also is extremely anti-Zionist and anti-Israel. Right. So there's a relation, but I don't think there's, there's a correlation, but not a causation. What were you saying, Connor? Well, look, I, you know, sure. I would agree with that. It's just I, fun to theorize. I think many people, because we all at this table know people that we would say maybe, maybe prior to all the lockdowns, but people that we would say are good, intelligent, reasonable people sure. who are like, but you have to wear your mask. Like, what do you mean? But, do you know anything about how will you not wear your mask if you go into a grocery store? Well, well, Fauci said it's like what, what do you mean Fauci said? Fauci fucking we shit. caught we caught this guy. Okay, but that's besides the yeah, point. Yeah, the NIH the point, came out today and yes. said, "Oh, gain of function research." Yeah, we totally did that, which we've known for a year. Which this motherfucker came out and said, "No, no, we didn't. We didn't do that. That's ridiculous." And no one's gonna do okay. Look, any fucking thing my about it. Point. My point. Are in you all putting this, this clip on Instagram? My point is, in all of this, is that you should. many of these people that we know that are like this, that again, are, are friends, family, whatever, you know, by and large, they've been lucky enough in their life yeah. to have the people in power genuinely looking out for, for, for many of their That's, needs. I think, most of our parents. Well, and, and, Because and, America is a good place and generally has been. Well, and that, that's, I mean, that's, I guess, my point. So you get these people How dare who, you? Other, who, are, who are looking <laughs> at you like you're a leper. Like you're what the grand one. Like, not like worse than that. The great, like, the great unwashed, yeah. That's like exactly you're a lunatic yes. for, for trying to take care of yourself. Sacre bleu. You know, How could you? You know, for trying to take care of yourself. And like, you know, I've run into... What do you well, mean uh, you're a lunatic for trying to take care of yourself? No, I'm not going to get into that. That's, that's no, I, I ask what you mean is, do you mean they think that or you think that? No, no, the, 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 any number of folks. You know, when you tell them how you how you feel about maybe the F-O, pandemic. F-O-L-X, I assume. Yeah, ex- absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, but, but, but here's why I ask. Is and why do you ask when people are wearing Welcome masks? Back, Jasmine. This is why you're asking. Like, let's let's, on, let's forget on. about the mask. Sorely for a missed. No, but this is why I like to <laughs> always try and take a more sympathetic approach. We well, you you mentioned this earlier, right? Oh, you give everyone a chance, fuck right? Sympathy, Jesus. sure, of course. No, no, I disagree wholeheartedly with your fuck sympathy comment. My uh, point in giving people a chance disagree is all you want. Giving, I'm not giving, sympathetic. <laughs> giving me the respect to give you. Like, if you want to wear a mask, sure, but that's you got to understand. But as soon as you ostracize me for not wanting to do it, a lot of those people are being lied to, as you just pointed out, oh, and yes. they have no fucking idea what the truth is. Well, exactly right. And then... So they don't, they don't right. think for Again. themselves. So you have to... It's up to you and me and everyone here this to find point. new ways to communicate in order to get them to see the truth. This was, this because was CNN they says, do not know, so you don't can't do really your blame own research. them. I'm not allowed just to say... To what they although say. I do I mean, think some I'm, people look, bury their heads and, in the sand. And my point is I, I would never blame anybody until they're forcefully ignorant at me. Right, you but if you've seen the movie They Live... I don't know that I have. Okay, so in the movie They Live, the metaphor is that body snatcher aliens have taken over the world, right? Sure. And the main guy, John Nada, so he's just no man, basically, right? He's an Odyssean archetype. He puts on his uh, sunglasses that he finds in this random box. Obey. And it allows him... This is where Obey comes from. It allo- He sees through all the advertisements and just sees... Oh, I, have seen that. Okay. I absolutely have seen that. So okay. he tries to get his Lee. friend you, Keith you know David. You know the scenes from it either yes. way. Yeah. No, I've seen it. Uh, at so least, you know the scene where he fights Keith David, yes. big black dude, right? He's yeah, like, put on the glasses. Jack point. Right? Yes. Well, I, I, he's never seen that, though. Credit him. Uh, well, sure. Zizek absolutely made the point. Fucking, but I mean, John Carpenter made the point. Let's be real. The point of that scene is that a lot of people, he just irrationally does not want to put on the glasses. Right, he doesn't of know course. what the glasses are even going to show him. Man. He just knows you're trying to show me something that's going to fuck up my world. Well, and again, this was the point I was getting around to, was because many of these folks, these good, intelligent folks, you know, as Bill Hicks said, F O L X. Yes, exactly right, F O L X. Thank you <clears throat> for clarifying that. I don't want to seem untoward towards, you know, folks. 
towards regular <laughs> towards folk, excuse me, because what what is you know what's what's normal, I guess. Right. It hurts to step out of the cave and well, see the light. It hurts sure. to step out. Yeah, yeah. it's the metaphor of the cave, exactly. Yeah. And sure. and potentially you're telling them that literally everything that they have built up to this point yeah. is is false. You're calling yeah. them stupid. Well, yeah. not even calling them stupid. Just saying, hey, look. You, I think with the you've number been, you've of potentially background been, noises there, are, you can just say, "Can I have a lighter?" Yeah, I would say, yeah, you yeah. can. Uh, Please. You know, a lot, I'm a trying to not th- disrupt the flow of conversation. It's getting interesting, you know. You know, but a lot of these, okay. a lot of these people, you know, they like, like, like Bill Hicks pointed out. It's like, uh, you know, shut that guy up. I've got a lot invested in this. Yeah. You it's know, in this ride, it, yeah, yeah. in this ride, it, it this has to be real. It can't all be so such fragile bullshit. Yeah. You know, and look, I, I, I certainly don't want to say that anyone's life <laughs> is. I don't say anyone's life is is fragile bullshit. It's not that what I'm saying. I, I mean, you know. Our the, uh, grip on reality is only made up of the information that we receive. And nowadays with the internet and everyone's, thank you, <laughs> everyone being polarized, sorry, I had to blow on my putt. getting two completely different sets of information, like we live in different worlds. Yeah, yes. every, people with different data, the whole point of giving people different data sets is to ensure they won't communicate. It's the Tower of Babel. Mm-hmm. You're trying to build something together. The person up top uh, says, I no way. I, come on. Speak different yeah. languages that's in the Tower of Falls. That's a story that you're misapplying. What? No, that is no, that absolutely is the, the archetype. No, 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 I understand that that's the story. But what's happening right now is that there's... You don't think people have been given different data sets? I think people have absolutely been given dis- different data sets. Do you think but there's not, intention to it? No. I, I think really? that there are some people out there who are absolutely doing it intentionally. But on the, on the, on the whole, absolutely not. I think the internet introduced us to a completely different way of getting information, okay, which fragmented CNN us is? away from a mainstream society that used to keep us together. And by the way, the mainstream society that people used to rally against for good reason, because they were being fucking lied to, because they only had, you know, three different news networks. Rallying against that and fragmenting ourselves into even more niche little pockets of society has caused us to become incredibly separated from one another, and it's caused our society to, in essence, collapse. It's made it much harder for us to communicate with one another because somebody who listens or reads Breitbart is... And this is just how it's panned out. But it, along uh, 20 years ago, it was just starting to do this. Now, somebody who reads Br- Breitbart is getting a wholly different set of information than somebody right. who's reading MSNBC, right? Is there intention to the writers of those places? No, I don't think so. Well, they each think that they are saying the truth. Exactly. And so I'm not saying, and, and maybe there's intention to like some George Soros's and, you know. No, I'm not even trying to go there. The Microsoft the media guy. That's where you would have to go in order to make your case for there being intentionality for them trying to divide us based on information. You would have to go to Alex Jones land. So you have to be prepared well, no, to do here, that. Here's where I disagree well, with you People are incompetent. I don't believe in some international cabal. I'm sorry, yeah. I just don't. Now, no, I, 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 I absolutely think believe in some this. cabal because the Great Reset is real. And there's a bunch of Klaus Schwab motherfuckers. And yes, that's true. That's yes. true. There's, yes. there, 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 there is that. At this point, they're admitting it. But the, po- the point isn't that. The point is, look, in the, in the great cultural revolution but, in China, but, but, but they, fought, f- they, they got children to beat a teacher to death. Yes. And it wasn't like they intentionally beamed out a message, beat this te- teacher to death. But they did so radically brainwash them that they basically acted on the brainwashing <laughs> true to form. <laughs> And in the same way, you can. This is why I always like to say woke people are like the Hitler youth of today, in that they're fucking basically the brainwashed foot soldiers. They they think they're doing the right thing. They think they're yeah. serving their country in a sense, but really what they're doing is the bidding of people who use them mm. as pawns. I see. Well, let me push back on that a little bit because I'm not sure if they think they're doing the right thing. I think they are afraid. And so they don't bother to try doing the right thing. They just try to comply and stay out of the way. They it try ties to seem it. like they're doing the right well, thing. Exactly. They're they're just trying trying to get they pussy. try to stay under the radar. It's like we were talking about earlier with Connor. And that's my, that was my experience. Smart be the gray man. Person. Be exactly. the gray man. Right, but try I, to be, he's not, I don't try refer to, be to him as anonymous. As but what I'm saying is I don't think a lot of these people think they're doing the right thing. Some I, of them do. I, some of them definitely do. The most vocal, I think, do. Uh, the most vocal certainly do. But I think the most vocal are certainly the vast minority. Right, but they're the ones who are really pushing things. I in understand the wrong that, direction. but what I think, but but their power only comes from compliance. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like many different commentators have said. If no one complied with the bullshit lockdowns that cops weren't really prepared to enforce in this country anyway, did you know that there have been thousands and thousands of citations in New York or warnings in New York, but there have only been ten or twenty <laughs> actual tickets written up for violating like 
COVID guidelines. Well, they shut down the uh, in and out in San Francisco. That's California. I mean, that's different. And by the way, in and out reopened and caved. This is what they don't tell you. Yeah. Conservatives are praising them, but they in and out decided to reopen and keep their dining room closed to comply. Well, yeah, if their dining room's closed, they don't have to check. Exactly. Yeah. So that's compliance. So they're which skirting I think around is fucking it. bullshit. Well, they yeah. closed their dining room. No, I think what there's what they what nobody should be doing is praising in and out for that. I think in and out deserved to be praised in the beginning. But at first they were like, We're not we're not supposed you, to be you close and then you reopen but without your dining room, fuck you. You're 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 uh, playing a game. But either well, way, they're a business. They have to stay open. No, they don't. No, your business is getting fucked no matter what. Exactly. It's like we were saying earlier when we were talking about leaving Los Angeles or or why we the absurd never, you know, doubled down. Why we all not the only reason, but one of the reasons we came together as a group under bent knee. It's because, and you know, it goes to the name. We're not going to bend the knee. Bend knee records. Absolutely. Right. Not. Um, and. Well, it was also a joke because we changed the name finally under pressure. <laughs> yes. We bent the knee and changed from, the name. From fake news. Yeah. yeah. Um, which, which is whatever. And that's, it doesn't matter one way or the other, but one of the things that brought us together was that we can't, you know, that we are just not going to play the game the way that people want us to play. What we see as the best option based on our moral principles and also our chances of success is this route, not the other one. You know, or at least I can speak for myself, you know, and I think that that's one thing that binds everybody here together. And so I think a lot of these people aren't doing what they think is right. I think they're just fucking cowards. Well, the, like, these look, people who comply. I think, I think, that, I think that, that exactly. uh, denial and repression are v- very More real and easy to manipulate realities think, of human psychology. I think people in denial and who are depressed will get me killed but if so, they're fighting on, for I me. Agree, so I agree. Fuck so, them. But here's the thing. A coward... Can no here's the here's the issue. If you're a coward and you aren't doing the right thing, you know you're a coward and you know it's not okay to be a coward. Mm, so no, if you can find comes in. So hold on. So if you can use denial to find a cowardly way to convince yourself that falsely you're doing the right thing when really you're just actually being the Hitler youth, right? That's just cowardice. I agree it's cowardice, but you also still think you're doing the right thing. No. Absolutely, and it, it, absolutely not. No, but the the reason why it matters That's hold on. The reason why the do the right thing point matters is because what yeah, really their slogan no what really hold on what really <laughs> yeah. is important denial is it's jesus a much right, more complicated what is really important phenomenon okay who cares though yeah. what is <laughs> really what is really important is that people know they should do the right thing they want to do the right thing even if they're being cowardly and finding some sort of unconscious way to like get around their cowardice that still enables mm. them to be a coward people have a moral impulse if that's what you mean Right, but so that me that is good news. Is that the conclusion? My point is there's reason you got to keep you have to when you said fuck sympathy, my point is no, you need to remember that people do want to do the right thing. So you have to somehow find a way to show them not that they're not doing do the, the right thing. thing. Most not, do. Okay, most absolutely do, but like you said, the most vocal in this group are the ones who think they're doing the right thing, which means they're not enacting a sense of denial. They actually don't give a fuck and they they see the world in such a warped lens from how we see it that they actually think that do you curves think they're brainwashed? are straight lines or nope. they just refuse to ever concede you don't think they're brainwashed no i don't think they're brainwashed i think they have a deluded sense of reality i think the people running this shit know that uh it's gonna fuck a lot of people over but i think their calculation is that in the long run history will redeem us it's the ends justify the means it's marxism it's exactly in it's in the book <laughs> right, but it's so in the communist so manifesto. You're, you're, it's there. You're familiar. So I think the people who are running this shit, not the people who are complying with it, but the people who are yes. running this shit, do not think that they're you know, or they oh, do, they don't they care. Do, no, they do think they're doing the right thing, but they think you have to break a few eggs to make it. Yeah, omelet. I agree with that. Whereas most people are, they don't think they're doing the right thing. They might want to do the right <laughs> thing, but they're too weak and cowardly to act on any of those impulses. So they ignore them, they suppress them, they use psychological mechanisms of denial to get there, which makes them cowards. When I said fuck sympathy, I don't actually mean that in its totality. What I mean is fuck sympathizing with somebody who's too weak, who if I put that person in front of me on the battle line, they'll get me killed. And I, I, at this point, I think people are basically but fighting... But what if you help them find for, their strength? I, if they gave me an opportunity, then I absolutely would, but I'm not going to help somebody who won't help themselves. Well, sure, but the, my I point is... I don't have that energy. Nobody does. But So I agree with that. Considering that, though, the fact that people want to do the right thing do, means that a lot more people than I think 
many in our camp cynically give them credit for are willing to help themselves if given a path to do so. Oh, I, I think history has shown that to be true and false. Well, that means Depends it's true and person. that sometimes the good guys don't win. Depends because, if the person has a, because, a rational brain or not. Because, because the arc of history doesn't bend towards goodness. The arc of history just bends. And I'm, so I'm aware. It's, it's up to rational, free-thinking people to make sure that it keeps bending towards goodness in as much as they're capable of making it bend that way. Well, the momentum is still in, in the favor of goodness. Nope. Yes, no, it is. Because nope. if I you wish. think long-term, nope, it's definitely long-term from the Middle country? Ages... Nope. The Middle Ages. That's Have a very you good. Seen Iran. Yes, you're talking about also, the bend of history. No, yes, the bend of history. Where do the you Middle see Ages. Iran going? It's about the Renaissance. The Middle it's Ages. Been an upward trajectory. The Middle Ages <laughs> came. Okay, but that's two thousand. That's not even. That's six hundred years of history. Fifteen hundred. Or, or I'm sorry, five hundred or so years. Yes, that's what I just said. So could be six, could be eleven. I'm a math guy. Yeah, I mean, you know, hey, come on, none of us are math people. We're musicians, which theoretically used to mean One, that two, you're a math three, guy. Four. Yep. Not still, yeah, yeah, it still we're, does. We're just we're, morons. We're rock musicians. Yeah. Yeah. One, two, three, snare. All right, kick, snare, kick. No, no, no. What I'm saying is the Middle Ages lasted for 400 years, and that came after what was considered then to be the most prosperous time in human history, at least in the West. That's why I say it's the beginning of the upward arc. It's not the beginning of the upward arc, though. It, it can't Since? be. So I'm civilization talking the re- the has exi- How long has civilization has existed for? Five thousand uh, years. I don't know. At least That's ten thousand years. That's generous too. Okay, let's say civilization has existed for ten thousand years. How long has the world been here? Millions. A couple billion. Okay, and how long have human beings ex- existed? One hundred thousand years. Two hundred fifty thousand. Okay, so out of two hundred fifty thousand years, ten thousand of those years were mostly filled with misery and suffering, and the arc of history has gone like this because while the West was prospering, the East was getting fucked. Then while the East was prospering, the West was getting fucked. And then gradually Britain came to own everything. We said, fuck China, we'll trade with them, whatever. Then a couple wars happened. The Ottomans got defeated, right? Then the new world order that we know it right now has existed. Okay. Now Since it's, World War II, sure. Now, though, you can't argue that things are arcing towards... Or, or you could argue, maybe. It depends how big your lens is. That's my point. I'm saying my lens is about 14 billion years. I mean, let's say those since the beginning. I would of, say that's too big of a lens. Okay, I would say that your lens is way too small. Don't if you're you talking also have since to the look Dark Ages, fourteen billion years into the future. I'm saying if you're thinking about the sine curve of My history, God. it's been an upward trajectory since the Renaissance. That's indisputable. It, an upward trajectory since the Renaissance. In terms of quality of life, in terms of your, expansion your, of freedom. Okay, then then your zero would be the Dark Ages. What do you mean? No, they, they would go into the negative. Downward, that would be a negative yes. dip. How could you have a downward trajectory, trajectory from the Dark Ages? Right. You would have to return to a state of nature, which is what the Dark Ages was, basically. Right, and then the Renaissance happened. Okay, so it couldn't be anything other than an upward trajectory from the Dark Ages. Sure. So that's not a proper place to start it. So you, you have to start okay, it from fine. the birth if of you civilization. Argue we're on the, if we're past the apex of the sine curve, sure. You have to start it from like the birth of civilization. starting your economic map on the Great Depression. Yes. Exactly. Yes. It would make no sense. Oh, just a vi- most economists and so, start and so, here. And so, and so, <laughs> so what I'm saying, actually, that's pretty good because the Great Depression followed a period of relative prosperity after an industrial revolution. And for years, people were fucking suffering. Uh, there were, you know, Hoovervilles and all that. And then, Although we're, we're almost there. Since then, it's, we're getting there. it's been going up. But this is, what, what, is your, what is your scope, like Josh was saying? Because right now, if you take it from the last two years... Things are bending downward in a sure. severe direction. I agree. So it's not the case to me that history arcs towards goodness. It's the case to me that history arcs. It's a very idealistic well, I agree way with that. to think about it. I agree it. that it's it, a stupid way I agree. to think about it. I don't, it. Well, I don't say it arcs towards goodness. arcs towards goodness or justice or something. Well, no, it arcs towards goodness because people like us care to make it arc towards goodness. Well, look. It, it, well, yeah, it has in the past and it can again. That's my point. Yeah. Part of For a know, reason. Part of what we were talking about earlier, a uh, point I meant to make was... For both sides, I think the internet, you know, that fucks up the plan, dude. People cannot communicate like this, you know, but... Either that or we're having very severe growing pains. Well... I I think it's it has to happen. Well, yes, certainly. Uh, The issue is, what does that do for the individual? Well, and also, what happens now because everybody... Okay, fine. This thing is happening. We can't stop happening. It's happening. What happens if that's the only fucking way people communicate? We take away... 
You remember the old joke of like everybody's a critic? Yeah. Yeah, they didn't know the internet was going to exist. <laughs> no, <laughs> they made that joke. <laughs> exactly. Jeez. Right. Well, and you know, Some foreshadowing. May, maybe then, okay, we can't put this genie back in the bag. Yeah. How how do we use it to isolate people? It's Pandora's box people, for sure. Yeah. When people were isolated, it was pretty easy to control them. All we needed was the Catholic Church. Oh no, you can isolate them. Well, and Connor, you can isolate them Connor, because what what happened what in the Dark Ages is that we lost eighty percent of mm-hmm. human recorded history. Yep. Okay. This is what I'm this saying. Is, this is my point. Is despite the fact that we might be arcing have been arcing like this since the Renaissance, there is no reason another to another Dark expect. Ages could happen. Sure. It's it's fucking uh, Hume's uh, problem of induction too. You can't just expect that the future is going to replicate the past because it's happened like that most of the time. No, I agree with that. Because you can't make a, a deduction from an induction. Chaos theory, too. Yes. Yeah. Kind of. But, but, but what I'm saying is you, you think about how much history we lost during the Dark Ages, how much communication was cut off. People used to live in urban centers, and then they went to, back to living in feudal fucking systems on, you know... An estate. Yeah, that's the Middle East right now. Well, the urban centers exactly. are full of syphilis. It, it still so. exists in the world, and there's and and it's creeping closer and closer to where we are. And so I think sure. since we're getting close to wrapping, uh, which I think is good. Yo, because, I didn't know we were going to wrap. I would have prepared something. <laughs> Rhythm and poetry. We're not we're not necessarily there, but we're getting we're approaching it. So I think we should tie it back in. We got to finish our drinks. Part of uh, I'm not going to finish these drinks. That's way too much. You're a bitch. I just plan to keep drinking. I don't believe you. No, I'm going to finish these drinks. Just not before the podcast. Oh, just not right now. Yes. Oh, then I definitely believe That's you. <laughs> um, it's not going to finish these drinks. No, what I'm saying is part of why this ties I don't even in know you anymore, ben. is because I, I think I think anyone who's paying attention, and this is obviously just my opinion, and I believe it's the opinion shared by everybody at this table, um, is that we are in a very dangerous position right now. So while in some other time maybe we wouldn't have been as politically engaged, I think we all find it important to be, be politically or culturally engaged, as it turns out. If we felt yeah, it was more politically if we felt it was more important to be uh, politically engaged and culturally engaged, I think we'd all be running I'd stay for in office. I would stay in Los Angeles. No, if I, that's what I, I thought. definitely would not. But or I'd go but to Austin. I wouldn't go to either of those places. There's no trees in either of those. Places. I was trying to be My political. Point, sure. No, no, no. If you're trying to be political, you should go Austin into a place where you trees. should where you can gain a following. In Los Angeles, you're going to get killed. But either way, my point was, if we thought it was more important to be political than cultural, presumably we'd be running for office or becoming lawyers. It's not too late, Benji. Ugh. But because I think we all think that I'm going to be a campaign manager because, someday. Because I think we all think that cultural influence is a little more important than political influence at this stage. And longer remember, it doesn't matter it, right now. Uh, we're all doing art and stuff like that. And so out. the thing that we got into when we were younger is has has morphed into something else. When I was younger, I just loved music. That's what I did. I fucking loved music. I couldn't. Fucking put it down. I, I, I still can't. Man. I can't either. And and I don't think any of us can. And maybe you're more of a film guy than <laughs> music. I don't know. Remains to be seen. You like all art. I think we all I like love art. art. Yeah. Yeah. My point, though, was my relationship with music is anybody I date, and God bless my girlfriend over there, uh, anybody I date is going to have to contend with the fact that I have this other bay. You it's know? just going like, to be there all the time. All the time. All the time, weighing down on my back like a fucking the burden that it is. Well, but I, if it wasn't that, we would be running for office. Okay, but but at a certain point, that just pure passion and love of music became entangled in the game, which became infected with, frankly, what I think it is is a bunch of people grappling for money, trying to gain, you know, come together in tribes. It's exactly what we're doing. We're gathering together. We plan to add more people. It's the uh, it's tragedy of the too. commons. Yeah, money's running out, so people are forming <coughs> tribes. Get your placements. It's fucking Squid Game, is what it is. Yeah, yeah Tragedy of the Commons, dude. Well, and here's here's no, what... Squid Game. <laughs> I don't know what Tragedy of the Commons is. Game of Thrones. Well, here's the funniest Star thing. Me your sheep. <laughs> Football. A lot of the friends Thanksgiving who we've made. <laughs> if you're poor. One key difference <laughs> between <laughs> us. I, sw- I can speak more for Ben than anyone, but. You guys too, probably. Don't you dare speak for me. And, oh, thanks, and, man. Uh, <laughs> a lot of the friends I've made who have very similar worldviews, and you'd be surprised how many there are. That's all I can say, by the way. Uh, how many but like, views there? No, no. People how many people agree. who many people there are. kind of see who see what's going? No, most they're not people silent. agree with they're, us. A lot of these people are getting censored. You keep. You oh. have to remember that. No, yeah. most of them I are cowards. I thought you were talking about the people who cowards. text you and be like, "Yo, I agree with you, yep. but I'm not right, going to comment." Yep. Most people are cowards. Less people are getting censored. Sure, but those people still feel like they're being censored by sis- they're be- being yeah, pressured they into like they silence. Yeah, because up. they're being socially pressured. Yeah, right. So but like, they're still cowards. 
Right, but maybe someday they won't be. They should speak up while Probably they can. Probably not. Well, what's the hero's journey about? Well, look. Why is this an archetypical story? Most people don't succeed you begin in the a hero's failure journey. That's why they call it the hero's journey. Well, look. Right, uh, but I'll, no, but the whole no the reason the hero the whole point of Campbellian and Jungian psychology is I'll that get back to it. This all right, yeah, you're right. Anyway, Occam's point. Point is Jesus one really. <laughs> <laughs> this man brought up o- o- Occam later. I'm thinking Murphy has more to do with this Murphy's shit long. than Occam. Yeah. Well, dude, I think you know. No, look, no, hold on. So he he wanted me to get back. What he wanted me to get back to was. I talk to a lot of people. Anything they share else? our opinion. <laughs> I would say they're more nihilistic, right? If you believe in nothing. And the issue with nihilism, yeah, seriously though, they, don't worry. These men, are, these cowards. men are cowards. <laughs> yeah, seriously. What this is? What, so it is relevant, right? Like the the issue I'm is that to find out how our band is called the absurd. Why? Because Ben and I are true absurdists in how we live our life and how we process information. Right? I'm Catholic. Sure. And I thought you guys were white. I thought you were Ben. <laughs> But so, like, damn, now I don't fucking, know what I am. <laughs> Just a dude. Right when now. I encounter nihilism, <laughs> up as a dude, the best thing I feel I can do is try and dissuade a nihilist from their worldview. No, you can do them one To better. a more constructive You can worldview. murder them. You can kill yourself. No, 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 dude. There's a you lot can of, also kill yourself. It solves all your problems. If you're a nihilist, it means you've seen most of the picture, and you just haven't taken the final step of realizing, all oh, right, I have free will. I can make meaning uh, for I myself. I disagree with that. Well, you don't right. have to see shit to be a nihilist. All you have to do is give up. Yep. My, which no, is no. easy. Which is bullshit. And don't easy. you want to be helpless and alone? That's, That's exactly easy. right. Well, look. And look, my, my vendetta when he locks her away in order for her to not have woman. care anymore. That's uh, okay. So, I, you know, I, I would say for me, I play music because I have to. I don't have a choice. I'll spontaneously combust if I do not. And being mm-hmm. aware of... I'd actually like to test that theory. Yeah, let's do I mean, uh, I mean, I wouldn't, it. but I'd love to it? see you blow up. I, I'll just have you... I wouldn't love to see you blow up, <laughs> just see but I would love to see someone, someone blow up. Hey, literally blow man, up. Man, you could join Islam. Oh. <laughs> That's true. You mean ISIS. Well, then I wouldn't ISIS, get to see someone me. blow up. I'd have to or blow myself Taliban. up Islam while other people are blowing Jews. up. No. All right, as long as I can fly the second plane. What is happening? Second? Nothing. I okay, go, so I like, want to go back to fucking Ben's point about look, music being entangled with politics. Okay, this, and this was my point. I, I play I play music because I have to. Yeah. The politics thing is uh, because I'd like to be I'd like to have the freedom to keep playing music if I so choose. Yes. Right. You know. So the music that I grew up, I, I feel similar to you in that music has been my whole life. Yeah. Like growing up, my dad is a musician. He introduced me to Persian music, yeah. which post revolution was all censored and it was all revolutionary music so they spoke in poetry and they didn't say what they meant yeah. actually and that was a form of revolution for them mm-hmm. and they i don't know for for me right now it's like i have the freedom to make music in this country yeah, and i have the freedom to say what i want to and say going to and, jail. Now, and now those freedoms are being threatened well yeah people so, people will look down on you for just saying how you feel and it's like yes. no my my family came to this country because yeah. back home that's that would put me in jail that would get me killed mm-hmm. and it's terrifying because the, after the united states where else are we gonna fucking go yeah you know? so are you and, trying and to be you, more political with your music because your music isn't particularly no it's political. not it's not about Neither that it's not no look it's not about that. yours just, is for sure saying, more no, 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 political. saying no, no, no. what i need to say is, no, 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 is no, no, no. enough no, no no look it's not about that at all it's not about it's not about making your music political at all it's about as an individual you're going to have to engage more than you thought that you were going to have to you're not going to be able to keep yourself out of the way of the Eye of Sauron, you know, you sure you can't. It's in our pocket. You, yeah, the Panopticon. It's sure. in our pocket. <laughs> no, but yes, yeah, yeah, you willingly carry it around with you because you think it benefits your fucking dumb Siri? Fuck say what, music hold on, career. Ben, ben, say what you're saying. I just did. Really? Uh, yeah. Well, you, what were you saying about the Eye of Sauron? You can never escape. You can't escape scrutiny, and they will come for you. This right. this woke mob. If it's not the mo- woke mob, it's the you know, conservatives need something to react to, too. So if it's not the woke mob, it's the fucking evangelicals who will come for you because you're promoting Satan or something Their like finger that. finger on the fucking button. Yeah, because they're the most... Well, it's the crucible, right? Milk toast assholes. Exactly. The it's the same thing over and over again. Yes, burn, exactly. burn the witch. Well, my point is that it, 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 you don't necessarily have to... Like, I, I'm not of the opinion that you need to... J- despite the fact that I write what would be considered politically conscious lyrics... I don't consider myself a political musician because that's boring. Politics are largely boring to me. But 
if you don't engage in politics, you're a fucking uh, either an idiot or a nihilist, in my opinion. Right. I think you a lot of people are nihilists. Engaged. Civic engagement and civic involvement is the only reason that you have the freedom to do the shit you have to do. So you should fucking get Silence involved. is violence. Silence is violence. <laughs> Ugh. Um, <laughs> silence is the opposite of violence, as far as I can tell. I mean, if violence is like really going out and no, doing something. No, but staying silent in the face of injustice. It's violent to your own stuff like that. But, but see, well being so maybe simple, simple, dumb quote unquote truisms like that say basically nothing. Silence well, is violence is... unless you're a uh, Jew who's trying to make it out of the Holocaust, who has to stay silent while you watch all these Nazis murder people so that you can save yourself and your family. In that case, silence Hopefully. isn't violence. Silence is peace. You know. So, so to me. Well, if you want any chance, that's my point. And to resist evil, sometimes it's you context have to be dependent. Quiet. I mean, people like like Ben Shapiro has said, uh, if you're in school and you have to write an essay and you know you're going to get a bad grade be- because you wrote your own opinion because your professor is a lefty or whatever, from his perspective, um, you should just write it the way they want it, so you get the good grades and you work your way in a position where eventually you can. And I agree and disagree with that. Well, then you're being, then well you're that's being what Michael Mala says too. What's that? You're being taught from very early age that that you 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 can't you can't speak out. Well, and and that's a good lesson because life is were, like that. Were you taught that? You can't that? fucking speak out and say whatever the fuck you want and were expect you to that? reap no consequences. With all due respect, fuck you. Yeah, and and well, look, my opinion as uh, it's it's no wonder that I'm a rock musician yeah. or that any of us are rock musicians sure. because all of our base instinct is to say, you know what, go fuck yourself. Yep. But is that your smartest move? No. For advancing your own cause of freedom and peace and goodness and all of that? Well, no, that's the Mike not, Miles point, right? It's not you always the undercover because that's what the bad guys have been It's doing. the Tim Pool point. I actually... Look, keep your I, friends closer, enemies closer. I mean, exactly. Just period. And, and, and well, d- there's a fine line between doing that and yeah. being a coward. There, there, was, just there was a point... We just already kind of... The boat sailed on that one for yeah. me. Well, there was, <laughs> there was a point... Yeah, sure, there was a point that, that uh, on, on Tim Pool's uh, IRL podcast he brought up today. He had this guy, uh, Joey... B spoons or Joey salads? No, it was Joey B spoons. Okay, I have really? no idea. Who this Joey is. be a dummy. It sounds. Like. I don't know Joey salads. Either. Joey was a pretty smart guy, guy but okay. his well, name me, was Joey. Joey B spoons. And uh, that wasn't his real name. No, it's some. U- it's a YouTube moniker that he ended up making money on under, under, and he's since been super censored. Anyway, Luke Rudkowski recommended that he be brought on. So Joey, <laughs> Joey started talking Shout about. Shout out to Luke. He said, you know there's shit on YouTube. And then he goes, you know what? Do me a favor right now. Look up Real versus Dildo Challenge on YouTube. And and then he goes, <laughs> look up uh look up naked yoga. And Tim Pool goes, no, 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 no. And right there I said, I don't respect that shit that Tim Pool just did. And Joey was like, No, I need to make this point. They're censoring us for saying there might be problems with the vaccine, but for the record, the real versus dildo challenge is a guy getting fucked in the ass with multiple objects and then another dude behind him fucking him in the ass slightly off camera and the guy who's getting fucked trying to tell if it's a dick or a dildo. That's on YouTube. You can look it up. You guys should do that. That's hilarious. I don't care if that <laughs> content's... Great, it's a great idea. I don't care if that content's there. What I do care about is if YouTube is censoring people for being like, eh, the vaccine might not be safe. No, you, you can't have that out there. Well, but you can have a guy fucking yeah, another guy in the, the ass. World, sure. Yeah, no, that is fucking bullshit. Yeah, they're an is. evil company. But my point was that Tim Pool made the point of like, ah, look, we want to appeal. And here's where I'm very on the line. I'm very on the fence. From Tim Pool's perspective, he's like, look. We'll be kicked off YouTube eventually. We're just going to comply as long as we can. Yeah, get as many then, people for your And then they do the members-only content later where mm-hmm. they spill all the fucking beans. You know, and that's great. It's not on YouTube. But my thing is, like, you know, fuck you. You're kind of supporting this shit that is no, actively you're trying, destroying What Connor just said, free keep, speech. keep your friends close, your enemies closer. He's, you're, you're taking people from the censorious company. You need to... The people who are on this platform who may be frustrated by said censorship, like you, right? That's what you are, technically. Smart people? Sure. We'll find this stuff and we'll support it. Yeah. But well, it, no, issue- hold on. You, Gret, here's the thing. The, the people who are, you could say, on the wrong side of 
history nope, right you now. No, shouldn't say that. Whatever. Yeah. The people who are enacting a lot of the bullshit we complain about, they have been running the long con. Right, so the only way to defeat that is the long con. So is Alex Jones. You're, Look up right, Yuri, but, but Yuri you're, Basimov. But you're not right. Sure, yeah, that's a good point. Look yes. up Yuri Basimov. Is that the thing? Yeah. yeah, the yeah. guy, the KGB guy. Yep, he's a KGB defector. Or he just spells out go to exactly. Rumble. Yeah, I don't know anything about Rumble. Right, but here's spell, the thing. So a, a, a fast. Oh yeah, well I know how to spell Rumble. Unless you are. Uh, oh, unless you, you said are, you didn't know anything about anything it. about it. Yeah, I'm aware. <laughs> the question is, has no, this shit really hit the fan? Unless you are, no, unless you are literally getting murdered, unless you are literally. Your life is literally in danger. Fast resistance is unlikely. You need to run the long con. Tell back. that to the uh, revolutionaries in the American War, in the American Revolutionary War. Tell that to the people in the Civil War. Yeah, that's a different situation. No, man. it's fucking not, and that's always the excuse that people of your ilk use. History what is my is ilk? Pe- history is a pendulum. Your your ilk is too forgiving. We've in been my very lucky. Uh, I mean, we're not in a war. We're in. Then a if I, if, if, if me and Jesus war. are going to be in that camp, I'll in, take we it. We are in a cold war, and it for the record, the last major American war was a cold war. And when Jamie Kennedy right, it's is fourth saying generation we're warfare. Fight. Yeah, we're which is as damaging. Which is the long con? Yeah, it's the long con though. Okay, so my point is, your life is in danger. That's not okay, but most people don't understand this. So you need to run the long but con to make do. them under. So you have to do something that effectively makes them understand it. And what I think Tim Pool does, I think we should go burn ourselves on fire in Tiananmen Square. No, look, yeah, what did that do for those people? Well, it killed that guy. He was probably pretty annoying. No, the guy who made a difference. There Guys, I'm gonna do it. Was the I'm motherfucking go photographer? Up. Do it, Jack. The photographer who smuggled <laughs> You've been that film this for weeks. Fucking, come on, man. We the photographer who smuggled that film. Into Hong Kong and out to England in America. That's the guy who made a difference, was the photographer, the person who got the word out. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> abs- oh, I'm sorry. You're so fucking wrong. The photographer made a difference, but to say that those other people didn't do the. I'm not saying they work, didn't. No, they, they, did, put, their, did the they put their lives on this. This isn't. My, you gotta, the photographer did. Ben, you, you're not, consider that uh, <coughs> if you're Tim Pool and you're trying to build an alternative to it YouTube, doesn't matter. I you understand. need to access as many people who would be interested in something think, like YouTube think, as think, possible. Well, no, my, my original point was that you... So don't give them an excuse. Uh, I'm sorry, but the... the, the it's not you, how you, I would play it, but I get why he does it. It doesn't matter. My point was just that there is obviously a very thin gray area between the two perspectives that we're deciding to take uh, on parts of this debate. The gray area is at, at one point, I think... You are playing with fire in being too forgiving to people who you should stand there firmly and put a fucking middle finger up to. Well, and I think but people so is like Tim Pool that's why we're here or what? Yes. So we're in the and I think Tim Pool is playing with fire. I think Ben Shapiro is playing with fire. I think all these people who are deciding to become the exact things that they hate are playing with fire. Like the people that have sold out our country, there's money. Yes, in playing with that there's fire, there's a lot of money. And you know what? Better. Uh, I mean, I'd, I'd like. Some wouldn't of that you money. agree? Wouldn't you agree would. though? Wouldn't you agree? Better Tim Pool than CNN? Yes. Yeah, certainly. Yes. Okay. So, so what's wrong with playing with fire? Then? But what if Tim Pool puts CNN out of business? Who are you going to hate? It'll be Tim Pool. Sure. Yes. Okay. So my but point... that's just that's recursion. That's the turnover of life. Yes, because the arc of history doesn't bend towards goodness. Uh, it just bends. Well, history repeats itself. It's a sign curve. History sort of repeats itself. I mean, it totally but, repeats itself. Kind of sometimes. Like it history repeats itself we and also doesn't it depends on your year. confirmation bias. Yeah, exactly. We have 365 no. days every year. Don't tell me there's not a conspiracy. No, the, the problem is that humans aren't that different. You know what I mean? It, like it, that's throughout, exactly throughout right. history and right. the problem will always be that humans repeat themselves. Well, I mean, like, look, there, there's there's new studies finding that even things down to, like, your fucking kinks are genetic. Yep. Ew. Well, I mean, look, but the point in saying that so is, So I like, like feet because of my dad that's and That's exactly mom. right, man. Jeez. Maybe, your maybe, maybe your dad or your mom, maybe both of them. Actually, that's the only fetish I really don't uh, understand. Probably many other fetishes that I don't understand, but that's, elbows? like, one of the main fetishes. It's like 10% of the population. Elbows, bro? I, I really don't get it. I don't get the like stilettos on balls thing. Uh, it. <laughs> what the hell is that? Okay, well you say that, but I used to know a security guard at no, a place. No, I've, I've seen that will go almost okay. everything as far I have as not, I can tell. I have, I have not that seen sounds this awful. I am the most don't, squeamish that person. That hurts my balls. I am, most, on balls. I am the most squeamish person in the entire world. Is you this guys how we're going to close this part? <laughs> no, yes, it is. <laughs> Actually, disgusting. Right. Stilettos well, on balls. Well, but there was a there was a security guard at a bar I used to play at all the time with my old band. Testilettos. Uh, that he Oof. he was he <laughs> apparently he apparently uh, he was Samoan he was a big big oh, dude oh sorry stilesticles yes yeah uh, he was a big dude and he uh, 
he apparently had a micro penis oh. and liked to get it stepped on by. Oh, and he was well, like in porn. Okay, so he had because it was micro. Yeah, if you had he a had micro a, penis, he had he'd probably be in else he hated himself shit. and he needed to get it out. I have a giant now, donkey dick, so now, I'm not sure about now, any of that. But yeah. but he was paid quite a bit of money yeah. to let other people film this and then have other people you know do whatever they're gonna do with it. Yeah. So my point is like uh, you know yeah even ball stepping. <laughs> So that's a, what? All right, that's a good place to stop. I think it's great, great, great. That's a great, good place great, to stop. Great grandfather. That's a very good place to stop. All right, so this has been hey, look, bent knee live. ladies, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> whether you decide to comply uh, or, a, or, or a fight, live. we want you to give us uh, your money. So all of it, preferably. Come and buy our artist stuff. We have plans in the future to Bentney Records. Well, like, Bentney Records. Is, com. Uh, yeah, I think we'll have the links in the little bio. And if we're this Bent- crazy, Bentney Records. If we're this crazy, our art must rock. You know Or it must really suck. Well, it's not It's not just okay. And either way, sometimes hearing stuff that really sucks, it's terrible. But my my fiance like this. I do too. I she agree loves, with her. She loves the most. She'll be like, do you want to hear something terrible? I'm like, one of, you just told me it was terrible. No, I don't She's like one of the only people I've met where she immediately, as, as soon as I bring up something where I'm like, isn't this fucking awful? She's like, I love it. I'm like, Who? I, I, me too. I unironically love shit. Is that why she likes Connor? Shit. Yeah. Ooh, burn. <laughs> yeah fucking oh, burn, shit. dude. How will you recover? Hey, right. look, I asked this question. I'm like, yo, excuse me. Let me rephrase that. I do not ask that question all of the fucking time. I wonder, but I'm like, yo. I'm not gonna start asking stupid shit now. Like I'm, just, you know. yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So for for the future, we're gonna try to keep this uh, segment coming back. We got a lot of really great bands we plan to work with. A lot more excellent people. We are planning to expand into video and film and stuff like and that. Coffee, we even. really we are expanding. Well, Clever. exponentially. I'm Fashion. expanding right now. Okay, expanding and planning to expand mean the same. No, some thing, things so. are happening. <laughs> I'd like to argue semantics for a while. The universe is constantly expanding. You're, you're not going to be allowed back on this podcast with your fucking semantic arguments. The Bentley universe is expanding. <laughs> Things are moving further away. We're planning to expand it. I'm expanding. Yeah. Yes. Butt's expanding. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> My so, butt is planning yeah, to expand. Yeah, hit up our all of our bands. Uh, you know, again, you guys all give your own little goodbye. This Plan has to expand been your butt. <laughs> me, Jasmine, from Sheedness. Hey, there you go. Do the thing. Expand your butt, right? Or plan to. All right, that's your goodbye, Connor. Whatever. I was clearly the best part of this. Thank you very much. All right, and that's the end of <laughs> it, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Bentley Radio, Bentley Live, whatever the fuck we're going to call it, didn't we? Yep. <laughs> <laughs>